Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If this is the last thing you saw, then hooray, you're in the right place. If you haven't watched part one yet, then it's linked down below, but this is the halfway mark, so welcome to part two of my houseplant tour. Let's continue, shall we? Oh, hello there. Come on in. On to the chair I go. Up here on top of the fridge, I firstly got just, it's a propagation of the variegated ivy that I showed you earlier in this video. And I'm propagating it in moss. I don't really know if it's gonna work. The growth towards the bottom is dying off. And again, as I've said, it should be, I mean, you would have thought a very hardy plant, but I just find it really quite difficult. So yeah, that's what's currently going on with that one. If it works, I'll let you know. And then up here I've got my Begonia albopicta, which although it's flowering, actually isn't doing that well. It was a lot fuller and a lot healthier looking before I moved. And if you look at the top there by the trellis, you can see a big section of growth that's just completely died back. And I haven't really, I mean, to be completely honest, I haven't really taken the time to get to the bottom of the issue yet. I've looked at the roots and the roots are fine. I think lighting for it is okay up here. I mean, it's fairly similar to what it was getting before. It could just be a change in environment. I, I don't know, as I say, I'm not a massive begonia person, so I'm not quite sure whether or not this is normal. This was one of my, oh, there go some flowers. Oh, lots of flowers are going. But this is one of the first begonias that has actually stayed in my collection. The other ones I've just kind of passed on to other people because they're not they're not my favourite plant. But nevertheless, it is really beautiful. I love its polka dotty leaves. Very similar to the, oh, one of the ones in the cabinet that I couldn't remember the name of. Either the snow cap or the white ice. I think it's the snow cap. Very similar to that. But then next to it, I've got a blue star fern. This was, uh, I was gonna say a rescue plant. This was one that was in my friend Emma's care and she just wasn't having much luck with it. It wasn't bringing her a lot of joy. And so I said I would take it off her hands and I'm so glad that I have because I think it's just so gorgeous. The color of those fronds, like they are just, they're such a perfect blue. And I really love having it up there because I just think it adds so much texture. It seems really happy up there as well. It is a fairly low light plant. So yeah, I'm happy with how that one is doing. And then I've got my Anthurium crystallinum, which I mean, I'm very annoyed. This was the leaf it was giving me when I moved house, which is obviously beautiful, but it did get a little bit damaged in the move. It was still kind of hardening off. And when they're at that stage, they are so unbelievably fragile. And as you can see, it has got some rips and tears in its leaf, but it's still gorgeous. I still love it very, very much. It's obviously quite similar to the Anthurium clarinervium, but its veination is slightly different and its leaf shape does tend to be a little bit longer. And I just love it. I love looking at it up there as well. I just have to keep being careful that when I open my fridge, it doesn't get caught. In fact, that's probably not making that rip any better. I should move that plant. I should probably move it over. But then next to it, I've got, oh, I'm getting hit on the head by plants here. I've got a Sansevieria metallica, and I think the color of this plant is just insane. I love the Sansevieria anyway. Like, I do have quite a lot of snake plants, but like, look at that variegation. Isn't that just incredible? It almost, if you didn't know it was a snake plant, it would almost give you like, Dracaena leaf vibes. Oh, in fact, I know Sansevieria is now classified as Dracaena, but do you know what I mean? Like dragon tree vibes. It's almost kind of similar to the lemon lime without the yellow, but I think it's beautiful. Again, it seems very happy up there. Oh, it's difficult to show you these plants because these ones keep hitting me, <laughs> but it looks very beautiful up there. It's one that I really don't have much cause for concern with. I think on the whole snake plants are just very easy plants. And that one's given me some beautiful growth in the time that I've had it. It just kind of does its thing and it has been happy wherever I put it. And next to it, I've got my Pothos Marble Queen. And oh my goodness, I love a Pothos plant. I really, I really don't think you can beat a Pothos plant a lot of the time. They are so easy to care for. They're so ridiculously fast growing. Like 
This one I'm probably gonna have to give a bigger chop to soon because it's gonna come all the way down to my cooker. But it's just such a hardy plant. And again, it's one that pretty much anywhere, anywhere you keep it, it tends to be fairly happy. And I just wanted to have some kind of foliage just breaking up the kind of, I don't know, the harshness of the kitchen. And it seems happy in that spot and it also looks really beautiful. But yes, right. And then whilst I'm still here, I've got a, hmm, a very, well, not very sad. In fact, I'll move around a little bit. A slightly, oh, actually, no, really quite sad looking string of pearls. And I only showed you guys this one in an updates video about three weeks ago. But in that time, I've, I've, I think I've overwatered it. Yeah, oh my goodness, yeah, if you look at the top there, it's, it needs chopping and propagating fairly quickly. And this one has actually, I've had this one for a couple of years now, and it's always been absolutely fine. And I know string of pearls are notoriously easy to overwater. I've never, well, I say I've never done it before. I have done it before, but I haven't done it for a very long time. And looking at this one now, yeah, I don't think there's much hope for her staying in that pot. I think I'm just going to have to take lots of cuttings and start a new plant, which is a shame. She was doing so well, but it's not the end of the world. It does happen from time to time. And to be completely honest, I haven't had maybe as much plant drama as I thought. Oh, is that a bit falling off? As much plant drama as I thought I was going to have in the move. So yeah, this is one that just needs my attention fairly quickly. And while I'm over by the windows, the other one hanging up here is, oh, one of my favorite, definitely my, one of my favorite hanging plants. This is my monkey tail cactus. And I'd wanted this plant for absolutely ages. And I don't know why, just here in the UK, they are quite difficult to get a hold of. And I know it is quite a young plant at the moment, but when they, oh my goodness, when they mature and they start to trail down, they just look absolutely amazing. And they're so fuzzy as well. Like, you can see all those tiny little thin spikes and I almost thought they were going to be like glycoids, like the very fine, like bunny ears cactus that get stuck in your fingers and are just very painful. And for that reason, I would not own a bunny ears cactus again. But this one is just so unbelievably soft and it's growing really nicely for me. And yeah, I think it's, I think it's very happy up there in that spot. I've just hooked it onto that bit on the window and yeah, I'm really excited to watch that one grow. I was also going to say, and you'll see this with like a lot of, well, in fact, all of my hanging plants, I do revamp a lot of my plant pots. I don't like spending money on expensive pots. And so a lot of the pots that you have already seen in this video, like down there as well, a lot of the pots that you've already seen are ones that I've made or nursery pots that I've just decorated. Um, I did make a video on that a while ago, if you're interested. And if you'd like, <laughs> if you'd like another video on that, let me know and I'll make it. Um, but yeah, all of them are pretty much in little revamped pots and makeshift macrame hangers. But this is, this is another red coral cactus. And as you can see, the structure of this one is slightly different to the one that I've already showed you. And the one that I showed you, which was down there over by my white princess, that one obviously is slightly more sun stressed and is a lot, a lot redder. And this one doesn't get as much light and... I mean, to be honest, the plant seems fairly healthy and it seems to be growing really well for me. So I'm not too worried about it. I think come summertime, it will give me some beautiful growth. But for now, it's just a little bit dormant. I guess I could always, I could potentially hang more plants in the window. And I think I'm probably going to have to do that at some point. But as I say, it looks healthy. It's a beautiful plant. I love it very much. And again, just texture. I think the texture of that plant is just magnificent. It's really, really gorgeous. And then next to it is another one that isn't doing badly, but could definitely be doing better. And again, I know this is a lighting thing. This is my string of turtles. And it's actually ironically started growing a lot better for me in the time that I've moved when it hasn't been getting so much light. But towards the ends of it, you can see it's just becoming very stretched and leggy. And quite often, most of the time when plants start doing that, it's because they're kind of reaching for a light source and they don't have enough. But I mean, I love it. I love its little turtley leaves. I love the, the patterns on them. I think they're so adorable. And I would say overall, the plant probably is healthy, but it does just, uh, to, in order to be optimally healthy, it probably needs, optimally, is that a word? I don't think that's a word. It probably does need just a little bit more light than what it's getting at the moment. And then next to it, this is a Raffatophora tetrasperma cutting. This came off my plant down there that you saw. 
And to be honest, I don't know why I've put this one in a hanger. I propagated it ages ago and then I put it in a pot and I think this pot, because I've kind of glued the string to this pot, I think this was already a hanging pot that I'd used for another plant and I just thought, oh well, I'll put it in there for now and I will deal with it later. And I haven't dealt with it yet. <laughs> this plant obviously wants to be climbing. It wants to be kind of probably on a moss pole. And yeah, you can see that huge aerial root there that is literally just looking for something to climb and it's not getting it here. So at the moment, I would say it's definitely, I don't like to say this, but definitely more of an aesthetic over, an aesthetic thing over what's actually best for the plant. So that is another thing to add to my list of things to do, get that plant a little bit healthier, perhaps even pot it up with my current Raphidophora tetrasperma. I mean, I know that one is very bushy already, but I could do that. Maybe I'll do that. But yeah, next to that I've got, so this is supposedly, and if anybody can confirm, that would be great. This is supposedly a Hoya gratzelis. And I got a Hoya gratzelis, or what I thought was one, I think about maybe about a year ago now and it turned out to be a pubicalyx hawaiian which is currently in my bedroom you'll see that one in a bit and so after that i was just like i really i still really want the gratzelis and so i ordered this in the same order as the red coral cactus a while ago and you know i said i accidentally ordered two of those i accidentally ordered two of these as well i think i must have just double clicked on the button for both of them i genuinely don't know how it happened but I have now got two of these and two red coral cactuses. But again, I just love the, the splashy variegation on its leaves. I think it's so delicate. I mean, delicate's a funny word to use for a Hoya, isn't it? Because obviously it is such a robust plant, but there's something about it. I think the shape of its leaves and as I say, just the subtle variegation that makes it look, I mean, it's just a very planty plant, isn't it? It's kind of just like standard classic plants, but, <laughs> but I think it's really beautiful. And next to that, I've got one of my spider plants. This is a variegated spider plant. And this one actually, funnily enough, I know spider plants do tend to prefer slightly lower light conditions, but this is one that I had in the conservatory before I moved. And although it was growing well for me, its color just wasn't as vibrant. I think the sun had almost kind of bleached the plant a bit. It was looking very, almost kind of turquoisey blue and definitely not as lovely and healthy as it's looking now. But since it's been in this spot, it's given me some incredible growth. And as you can see, it's shooting out a little runner here and it's getting ready to give me some babies, which is always exciting. I mean, it is exciting, but if I kept every single spider plant baby, then I would probably have about 300 spider plants by now. I do tend to give them away, give them to friends, give them to neighbors, all that sort of stuff, because they just produce loads of them. But yeah, it's it's a plant that I love. I, as I've already said in this video, I know a lot of people were a little bit funny about spider plants and they're maybe just not their thing. They think they look like grass and I quite like it. Texture wise amongst my other plants, I think it looks beautiful and yeah, I just, I really enjoy it. And next to my spider plant, I've got my Monstera Peru and I might need to, yeah, kind of tilt the camera a little bit so that you can properly see it because I'm not tall enough even on this chair. But again, this one, this one can be grown on a moss pole. And I did think a while ago about getting it on a pole because its leaves have the potential to fenestrate. And obviously at the moment, they're not, they're not doing a huge amount and it probably won't fenestrate unless I get it on a pole. I think I actually bought it in a hanging pot when I first got it. And it has given me some insane growth in the time that I've had it. I do really love it, but I also do really enjoy it as a hanging plant. So. So yeah, I'm, I'm actually, I think I'm, am I? Yes, I am. I'm propagating a little bit of it at the moment, which again, I think is in my bedroom. And I'm thinking maybe I will let that little section that I'm propagating become a hanging plant. And this one can go on a pole because as I say, you can't, I feel like the lighting isn't doing it. Oh, it's a bit dusty as well. Isn't doing it justice, but it's just got the most beautiful iridescent leaves that have so many shades of green in them. Let's see if I can get another bit to and kind of tell there. Do you know what I mean? It just looks very dark from afar. And when you come up close and actually look at it, there's so many shades of green in it. It's quite scaly, but no, it's, it's gorgeous. And it's a plant that I really appreciate. And I know when I first moved, some of you were asking whether or not I would actually be able to appreciate all of my hanging plants like this. And I do, as I say, I get them all down to water. I really enjoy kind of taking the time to have a look over them, dust their leaves, do all the things that they need. And 
yeah, it's a plant that makes me really happy. Oh, and I've just had to turn myself round because there's not enough space for me to fit my chair here. So these ones are a little bit, a little bit backwards. But this one is a plant that, oh, is attached to the other one. <laughs> this is a Peperomia Hope. And I've spoken about this plant so much in my videos because I would say it's one of my favorite plants. It's, it's one of the cheapest to buy. And I bought this one for, I think under a pound when it was about that big and it was in a teeny weeny pot. But I just love how it grows. It's got such beautiful succulent leaves that are just, I don't know, they're so perfectly round. And it's almost got Hoya vibes, like because of how succulent it is, but as, as opposed to Hoya, as I say, they're quite robust. Whereas with this one, if you kind of squidged it a bit too hard, I feel like it would almost pop. But no, again, I know I keep banging on about texture in plants, but this one has the most beautiful texture. And also this was the very first plant to enter my flat. When I first picked up the keys for my new place, I was like, I need to bring a plant with me because it wouldn't be right if I didn't have a plant. And so this one was the first one here. And since it's, since it's arrived, it seemed very happy. It seems to be giving me some lovely new growth as well, which again, at this time of year, I'm, I'm really impressed with. Like, look at those little bits just there. Diddy little bits of growth. But yeah, Peperomia Hope, one of my all time favorite plants. And this one, I can never remember the actual name of. It's something like Selenserius Werleckii. I'll put the name on the screen because I don't think I'm gonna get that right. But this plant I got from Hutch House Plants probably about six, eight months ago and it was doing really well and then I went away on holiday and I didn't water it before I went away because it is obviously, it's, I was going to say it's a hanging cactus or is it a succulent? I think it's a hanging cactus and I didn't water it before I went away. I thought to myself, oh, it'll be fine. I got back and it had just all started all around the base. It had started to just shrivel. And I was like, God, I'm going to have to propagate this plant. So in one of my repot and chat videos that I did, I completely chopped the plant up. I just planted it straight back into soil. And as you can tell, now it is doing really well. Its growth is really full and succulent and it's back to looking really healthy. It's not quite as big and trailing as it was before, but I really like it. It was ridiculously easy to propagate. As I say, I literally just stuck bits of it into the soil and it's done really well. Its pot has got quite a lot of markings on it. That's the only annoying thing about using the string, like the string pots like I do. If you get soil on them, then obviously it's very hard to get rid of it. But yeah, and then coming over to the next one, this is my Hoya Bella who is flowering for me at the moment. And just look at how gorgeous, oh, there we go, that's better, how gorgeous that flower is. I love Hoya flowers so much. They're just the most delicate, beautiful things. And they all look so different. Like that one's like a flower within a flower and they smell divine. Like I cannot even, I cannot even explain how gorgeous this one's bloom smell. I think it's up there for me with the Croniana, which has one of the most fragrant blooms I have ever, ever experienced in my life. But this one, the majority of its growth, as you can see, is facing that way into the main body of the room. And I did think about kind of spreading it out a bit, but at the end of the day, that is kind of where it's getting most of its light from. So although it looks a little bit bare from the back, that doesn't really bother me. And the thing I love with the Hoya Bella is just the shape of its leaves. Like again, it's, I know I said kind of standard plant. I think a lot of Hoyas, not kind of maybe the obscure weird Hoyas, but a lot of Hoyas just have very, very planty vibes. Like if you asked a child to draw a picture of like what a plant looks like, I feel like if they were to draw a vine, it would probably look like this. But the Hoya Bella just has the most beautiful color to it. It's kind of, it's like a very pale limey green as opposed to a lot of my other plants. And again, next to my others, I feel like it just, oh, I just, I can really appreciate it. I've tried to really, obviously I've thought about lighting when I'm placing my plants on hangers, but I've also tried to stagger them so that I've got lots of different leaf shapes next to each other and lots of different colors and all that sort of stuff so that I can really take in each one. But yeah, I love the Hoya Bella very, very much. And then this one, not a huge amount to say about this one. This is just one of my spider plant propagations that I potted up. It is giving me some lovely new growth. It's really filling out the pot now. And this isn't a variegated spider plant. This is one of the pups of that spider plant over there, which we will come to shortly. But yeah, I decided to keep this one for myself, or even though I've already got quite a few spider plants, I was just like, Again, I like the texture, I like the plant, it's very easy to care for, and it seems very happy there. 
So yeah, this next one might just look like a strange little pothos and it's actually, it's an Epipremnum kujang. And I'd never even heard of this plant before and my friend Emma was getting rid of some cuttings. I know I'm talking about Emma a lot in this video. I always seem to. Um, but she was getting rid of some cuttings and she asked if I wanted some and I, I said yes. As I say, I don't have a kujang in my collection at the moment. And it's doing okay. It's growing. It's, it's not doing anything major for me at the moment. I know when the kujang matures, it looks absolutely incredible and its leaves all split and... I'm hoping that this one might do that at some point. Again, maybe it needs to be on a moss pole to do that, but this is what it's looking like currently. Kind of just looks like a pothos, but I, I really like it. And just turn this one round. So this one is the Hoya Wyettii, just standard Hoya Wyettii. I did already have the tricolor and I love the tricolor so much, but it's such a slow grower. And I got the Hoya Wyettii just in the hope that it would be a little bit quicker because it wasn't variegated. And to be honest, I think it's too soon to tell. I haven't had this plant long enough to be able to properly gauge its growth. And I know Hoya are quite slow anyway, but I just love the shape of its leaves and I love the black outline, actually very similar to the next Hoya that we will come on to in a moment. But yeah, I just think it's, it's a really gorgeous plant. It almost looks like a string of green bananas. And I just love how the backs of its leaves are really pale and then the main leaf is, is a bit darker. It just, again, different shades of green. I think it's just really, really gorgeous. But the next one that also has the black outlines and it's in the name is the Hoya Parasitica Black Margin. And it's called obviously Black Margin because of the black margins to its leaves. It's a really gorgeous Hoya. Again, very, very easy to keep. I, I I was going to say I rarely watered this one. I think I probably watered this one. I mean, I check it every couple of weeks, but apart from that, it, it just kind of does its thing. It's very happy. It is a very fast growing Hoya as well. I got this one as a two leaf cutting, I think maybe January or February last year. And as you can tell in the time that I've had it, it's really, really filled out. And this is a Hoya that really does want to be on a trellis, as you can tell, it's putting out big tendrils. And so the hanger is just more of a temporary measure until I get around to trellising it. But in the meantime, I think it's lovely. I think it looks very pretty there and it seems very happy and healthy. It's really, it's a plant that really hasn't given me any issues at all, which is always nice to say. It's again, I would say if you're a beginner or if you're not that confident with plants or if you're just looking for a really nice Hoya, it would be, it would be my choice. And then we have an Epipremnum Cebu Blue. This again, I love the Cebu Blue, but it's not a plant. I wouldn't say it's a like considered a rare plant, but it's just not one that you see about that much in the UK. And I don't know why. Like whenever I watch videos from plant YouTubers in the US, you guys just seem to have it in abundance. And I'm very jealous because it's gorgeous. Oh, I've also just noticed some fenestration that I didn't notice before. I know this little leaf is fenestrated. But as I say, it's an epipremnum. It is very easy to look after. It doesn't require much care at all. It's got that beautiful bluey tinge to its leaves that I think is just so pretty. It's very adaptable with its lighting conditions. It's it's very fast growing. And I would say it's just all round a really great plant. I do, I do adore that plant. And next to it is yet another Hoya that really needs to be on a trellis. As you can see, it's sending out a huge big tendril there. This is the Hoya Astralis Lisa. And I say it needs to be on a trellis. Most of the time, well, most, most of the ones that I've seen, you do actually see sold in hanging baskets or just upright pots without a trellis. But I, again, I think I've just got a little bit complacent when there's, when there's so much planty stuff to be done. I've always got loads of things to do. And I'm like, oh yeah, that needs a trellis and that needs doing. But I think because it's still growing well and it is healthy and it seems happy here, I just haven't got around to it yet. But look at the variegation on those leaves. It's so different to anything else in my collection. It's just almost like the leaves are like naturally very dark and they've just been painted. It's got such beautiful colors and I love, I mean, as obviously with all plants, but I just love how the variegation differs so much on the leaves. Like. It's very unpredictable and I'm always excited to see what its new leaves are going to look like. Like that one is almost completely green and then, and then it's got some beautiful variegation. And the leaves often come in very pinky as well. I'm not sure if I'll be able to show you properly in this light, but yeah, you can see they're coming in very pink there. And then as they mature and harden off, they go to that beautiful colour. I've literally left all of the Hoyas to show you up here, but this is the one that you've seen many cuttings of already in this tour. This is the Hoya Croniana Super Silver and 
very easy to care for Hoya, very fast growing. When I first got this one, I thought it was gonna be quite slow and oh boy, was I wrong. It is so ridiculously speedy. It's filled out so much in the time that I've had it. And I just love, like, look at that little half moon leaf there. I just love, again, how all of its leaves are so different. All of them are very splashy and variegated, but there's some that are darker than others. And it's a plant that you can really kind of get up close with and notice things in detail, like what we're doing now. But also, if you just see it from afar, you just notice it's like just a bundle of gorgeous, gorgeous silveriness. And it almost kind of sparkles, I think because its leaves are so kind of hard and waxy and shiny. It just, it's just so kind of shimmery. Yeah, it's a gorgeous Hoya, and I mean, Hoyas in general, I think I've said already in this video, but Hoyas in general are fantastic for beginners. But this one, if you want something kind of quite unusual and very bluey, then I would definitely, definitely recommend this one. It brings me a lot of joy. And next to it is a Hoya Linearis, and this is very different from other Hoyas because it's so, firstly, it's so kind of delicate and fragile, but it's so soft as well. Like, you can kind of see all its little hairs there. It just... It feels like velvet and it grows amazingly. I got these ones at the first plant swap as cuttings and I think, I think I'm right in saying there was only kind of five or six strands of them. And at the time I thought to myself, well, maybe I'll take some cuttings from them, I'll propagate it and plant it back into the same pot and make this plant a little bit fuller. But it's actually, it's done that itself. Like in the time that I've had it, it's pushed out so much growth towards the top of the pot that it actually does look like a really full plant now. So I have taken some cuttings of it, but mainly just because it's getting so long. Like I have to duck underneath that when I walk through here. And I really don't mind that, to be honest. I am more than happy ducking around plants, but if you have tall, taller people over, then, then it's more, to be honest, that I worry about the plants getting damaged or them catching themselves on them or something like that. But it's a beautiful Hoya. It's, I would say, probably more sensitive than my other more robust Hoyas. I can imagine this one's a lot more sensitive to overwatering and stuff like that, but it hasn't touched all the wood given me any grief in the time that I've had it. So yeah, it's one that I really enjoy. Again, texture, it looks quite piney. Like you could almost imagine that it was quite spiky, but as I say, it's just, it's not at all. It's so silky soft. And then, oh, I'm sad to say, I've got another string of pearls that's not doing very well here. They were both, they were both doing well before I moved, but this is my variegated string of pearls. And as you can see, again, I'm not sure, Maybe this is overwatering. I think I should probably just propagate both of them, to be honest. It has got quite a lot of strands that have just completely died off. And, and yeah, it's a shame because it's gorgeous. And actually, you know what? The strands that it has still got are lovely and plump and they do feel very healthy. So maybe I could get away with just giving it a little prune and checking the roots. But often in my experience, when a string of pearls starts to go downhill like this, the rest will kind of follow. So I think it's probably sensible to take some cuttings, propagate them, and then if this plant bounces back, fantastic. And if it doesn't, then I'm kind of safeguarded because I won't lose the whole plant. But then as we come up here, this is the little section that's gonna be a little bit difficult to show you because I can't fit a chair in there to stand on. So I'm currently just balanced on the edge of my sofa and hoping that I don't fall. But this is a Hoya Crimson Queen. I've already showed you some cuttings of this in my propagation box. And as I say, I'm not quite sure why I decided to chop her. I think again, she was just getting very, very long. And she is a fairly fast grower. I got this one at the same time as I got my Hoya Parasitica Black Margin. Woo, I almost fell over then. My Hoya Parasitica Black Margin. And again, it was a similar sized cutting. It was only a couple of leaves. And she's given me some really beautiful growth. And again, with the Crimson Queen, you can see that new leaf there is so pinky. This one here, which again, this light isn't doing it justice, but it is gorgeous and pinky. And then as the leaf matures, it turns into this gorgeous creamy white variegation. And it's a Hoya that I really love. Another one that could probably benefit from a trellis, but seems to be growing really well for me and seems really happy. And then moving on to one that is not so happy. <laughs> This is, oh dear, this is a very sad looking Pothos Enjoy. As you can see, it's it's really not happy at all. And to be honest, I think that's probably just because I've neglected it a bit. I do like the Pothos Enjoy. In fact, I love the Enjoy so much, but 
I think because that's, oh, it's a bad thing to say, I was gonna say they're so slow to grow. I never really notice it changing. I don't really notice it responding to anything positively. And because it is very drought tolerant as well, I think like, oh, I haven't watered that one in a good few weeks and it definitely, definitely needs it. But I am also propagating some other sections of this plant. So at some point I am gonna pop them up together and get a lovely full plant going. And I feel like when it's not just one strand, I will be able to appreciate it a little bit better. And I don't by any means think that it's doomed. I just think it's not looking, not looking its finest at the moment. And then I showed you the Hoya Croniana Super Silver. This is just the standard Hoya Croniana, so pretty much exactly the same, but, <laughs> but not silver. Uh, and this one, very similar to what I said about the other one, is a very fast growing plant. Again, you'll have seen lots of cuttings of this propagating around my flats because it grows so quickly that it's, I mean, it was trailing down here when I first moved in and I couldn't get to the doors and so I needed to give it a little trim, but it's very easy to care for. It's got the most beautiful little shapes to its leaves, like they're like little teardrops. They're so gorgeous and yeah, in fact, it's also very good at telling you when it needs a drink. Like, if you compare that to the Croniana, you can kind of maybe see that it's not quite so firm and full and its leaves are kind of deflated a little bit. That is it telling me that it's ready for some water. So I will do that after this video. And then next to it, this is a plant that I always get quite a lot of questions about. This is my Lepismium bolivianum. And as you can see, it's properly trailing. It's a hanging cactus and it is one of my favorite plants. I may have said that about 10 of them in this video, but it's true, it is one of my favorites. It's so easy to care for, very easy to propagate, and it's just amazing at adding kind of a really, really jungly vibe to the space, if that makes sense. It's got so much texture, but it's not kind of, I don't know, it's not a weedy plant. Like if you compare it to the mistletoe cactus, for example, that one, is just kind of a little bit like, oh, hello. And this one is kind of like, boof, here I am. <laughs> and yeah, I, I really adore it. It makes me very happy. And again, I was slightly worried about this one moving here because it had fantastic light before. And as you can see, it's kind of, it doesn't have any light coming from above it. It's just got the lights from the window down here. And I was like, is that gonna be adequate for this plant? But so far, so good. If not, I was thinking, in fact, I was thinking in general at some point, I might just run some LED strip, like grow lights under the bar so that all of them can have a little bit more light. But I'm just, I'm monitoring them so closely. I'm listening for if anything's listening, watching for anything's not right, and then I can switch things up. But I've had minor issues and this one is still growing and does seem to be very healthy. So, so yeah, playing it by ear, but love it very much. You can't really appreciate it when the light's coming from behind it, but it's a gorgeous plant. And next to it, I've got a combination of two different types of Skindapsis. The one with dark leaves here is the Skindapsis argoreus, and it's so gorgeous. I love Skindapsis anyway, but these leaves, they're almost, I mean, they're so dark green, they're almost black, but then it's got those beautiful little splashes, splashes of bluey variegation. And then this one here, which looks fairly similar, but is just a little bit, little bit paler and its leaves just tend to be a little bit more heart shaped. This is a Skindapsis silvery Anne. And I don't usually like potting plants together, but I think because these ones are so similar, they just kind of look like they're meant to be together. I don't know, I really like them like that. And to be honest, it was more just to get the plant looking a little bit fuller because it was, it was just a few strands before, it was very sparse but I'm enjoying it and it seems again very happy in that spot. Skindapsis are very good at adapting to lower lighting conditions and not that this is low light, but when it hasn't got a light source kind of pointing right at it, I do consider it. I consider it to be probably a medium light spot up there. And then next to that, oh, just making sure not to fall off the sofa. This is the Hoya SP Bertone AF. And you you actually do see this type of Hoya about more nowadays. When I first got it, I had never seen it before. And I was just like, oh my goodness, what is this? It's just so, so pretty and so diddy. And the thing that I really like with this Hoya, again, can you tell on camera? Can you tell? No, I don't think you can tell. It's so fuzzy. Like its leaves are so ridiculously soft. And I would say as well, it probably is quite a fast grower. I mean, I have chopped it back. Again, I've chopped it back a few times. I showed you a propagation of it earlier in this video. But yeah, when I first got it, it was about two or three leaves, I think. And that was about six months ago. So what you're looking at, if you imagine that section there to come down to about here, 
is about six months worth of growth. But yeah, again, very easy to take care of. And I want to say, <laughs> I want to say a very sweet plant. I don't know why I'm using that word. I just think, and maybe it's just because it's not as big and beefy as some of my other Hoyas, but I just think it's really adorable. And next to that one, I've got my Hoya crinkleate, which is actually, again, looking a lot better since I moved. It was going very yellow before, and I think, I mean, it wasn't in a good soil mix, to be honest. I hadn't repotted it in a long time. I gave it some new soil, I've given it some more water, and I've actually decreased its light. And since I've done that, it seems it seems much happier. It's giving me some beautiful new growth. And the thing I love with the crinkleate is that, like, its leaves, if you look at them, they've got proper abs. Like, they're just so, they're so crinkly and they're so cool. And in fact, look at that like wrinkling that you see there that is it again telling me that it's ready for a drink usually when it's had water it will be very plump very full and when i start to notice its leaves kind of get a little bit a little bit wrinkly that is the time for a water so i think i'd better leave my chairs out and get my plants down after this video and give them a drink because i've seen a few up here that are desperately in need of some attention but yeah that's that one and then this one here is, so it's an Ace Cananthus marmoratus, but most people or a lot of people seem to know it as the Black Pagoda lipstick plant. And it is, it is just that, it is a lipstick plant, but it's, it's very unusual. Like the bottom of its leaves have just got the most amazing pattern on them. And as you can see, mine's actually flowering for me at the moment. And I haven't had this plant long enough to know whether or not that's normal at this time of year or whether it could potentially be a stress related thing. But I just keep, I keep finding little flowers just dropping to the floor all the time. And I'm just like, what is going on? And I looked up and I was like, aha, this is what's going on. But its flowers are actually really beautiful. They're like a gorgeous yellowy color. And I feel like I haven't actually got up here and had a proper look at them yet because I've just been catching them as they've been falling down. But yeah, look at that. I just love how this one's quite quite bush-like, like it's a very big plant. And I feel like it's just kind of a statement plant there in the corner and again, seems happy in that spot. So, so long as it's happy, I'm not gonna change anything. And then next to it, oh, this one, I mean, actually it is, it's healthier now. This one really, I mean, again, just got very neglected when I was moving house. It was one of the last ones to come to my flat. It was back at my mum's for quite a long time because I'd moved back home for a while and I was keeping a lot of my plants there. It probably went without water for, I want to say like a month, and it was quite warm in the room that it was in. It was in a conservatory, and it's doing okay now. I mean, it is a very resilient plant, and it does tend to bounce back very quickly, but this is the one that has given me lots of babies, like the one that was propagating in water over there in the kitchen, the one in the hangar over there. This is, this is the mother to all of those plants. It's given me so many babies over the years, and I've actually had to trim the whole plant back several times as well because it's just got absolutely overrun. And I had some little babies, and I don't know how this happened. It's never happened to me before. But I had some babies that just popped up from the soil and I'm guessing they must have self-seeded. It did produce seed pods at one point and I took all of them off and I, to be honest, I've never even thought of growing it from seed. I gave them away to other people, but I guess, yeah, it must have self-seeded, but I was just removing all of these babies from the soil and finally got it back to just the mother plant. But yeah, she's actually looking better now that I'm up here actually looking at her from above. She's looking better than I thought she was going to be. So yay, I'm happy about that. And then the one next to her, this is the one that I told, this is a philodendron Brazil. This is the one that I told you about uh, when I was down there showing you the little cutting by the kettle. This is the one that suffered some damage when I moved house. It got trodden on. I, I saw some vines had broken off it and I didn't really think too much of it. I just kind of thought, okay, well, that's a shame. I'll propagate those vines. And I didn't think about the damage that might have happened further up. And what had happened is that the roots had essentially broken off a bit of it. And so this whole section down here started dying. And I was like, what's going on? What's happening with this plant? It's really resilient and it's really robust and it's never given me any grief. And then when I actually checked, I could just see that the root system had been completely severed. So I did lose quite a lot of this plant. It was a lot fuller before. And to be honest, as I say, it's such a fast grower, it's not the end of the world. And I did manage to save all of the bits that came off it. So it's just temporarily looking a little bit more sparse than, than I'm used to it looking. It's definitely not looking bad, but it's not looking maybe as great as I picture it looking. And now we need to bring back the chair. Let's just move the table. There we go. So next, this is a Dracaena lemon lime. Is it a Dracaena lemon lime? 
oh, I might be wrong about that. This is a rescue chicana. This came out of my mum's collection and it was one that, I mean, it just had, I don't know when the last time was she'd watered it. It had been looking pretty bad for a pretty long time. And I eventually said, do you mind if I take this plant and try and make it look a bit better? And she said, yes, go for it. And then I became quite attached to it. And so I have kept it for myself. Um, but it's, it's not doing as well as maybe it could be. As you can see, there's areas down the bottom that are very bare. It is giving me some new growth, but very, very slowly. But it did just really need a big chop back. Like I, it was, it was very full before, but there was so much browning and yellowing. Its roots also weren't good. I think because they'd got so dry, then when I watered it, they kind of started to go a bit mushy. And that can happen sometimes if you do let a plant completely dry out, it can make it much more prone to root rot. So I think I finally got it back on a good track and I hope it continues to do well and start to give me some lovely new growth. I think this should be a very good spot for it because it doesn't get any direct sun from here, but I would say all of the plants up here are in kind of medium to bright light. And I do have, I actually put them on for this video because the outside light is fluctuating, but I do have just LED lights shining down on them. And although they're not kind of as powerful as grow lights, they still, I'm hoping, offer the plants a little something. So... So yeah, because grow lights are basically just very high functioning LEDs in theory. In theory, you could, if you put a plant right up next to a load of these, you could grow a plant under it. But yes, it's doing okay, I would say. It's doing okay. It's on its way back to where it needs to be. And then my fishbone cactus. This is a plant that I adore. I think it's so weird. It's so wonderful. It just doesn't look like a real plant. Again, like this is one that when I first saw it and I'd never seen a fishbone cactus before, I was just like, oh my God, I need that plant because it's so unusual and it's so like zigzaggy and it definitely, it just has so much character. And again, this plant is not particularly rare. Like you can just pick one of these up fairly cheaply in a lot of garden centers nowadays. And it's just so wonderful. It's so low maintenance. Again, barely water it. It's really good because again, it's a jungle cactus. It's very good at coping in a human environments which is perfect for the rest of my plants because I do keep the humidity very high in here and it's also very easy to propagate. I do usually propagate this plant straight into soil as I do with most of my succulents but I'm actually trying it in water at the moment. I've got some in water through in my bedroom that I'll show you shortly. But yeah, I think the one thing you need to be careful with this one obviously is overwatering because it is very drought tolerant and it doesn't need a huge amount. I think I was going to say it would be a great beginner plant. It would be a great beginner plant so long as you didn't want to kind of love it too much because often loving a plant too much and giving it loads of water and loads of fertilizer can be the thing that makes it go downhill. But no, I really have nothing negative to say about it. I think it's, it's wonderful. And I won't spend too much time talking about this next one because this is just another Hoya Gratzlis. This is the one that I was speaking about when I told you about the one over there. It was a duplicate of that plant that I <laughs> accidentally ordered. Um, but again, I really like it. I know I could, as a lot of people were saying at the time, why don't you sell one of them or why don't you give it away? And I was like, I, I just really like the plant. I really like the plant. And to be honest, for me, if I do really love a plant, I don't mind having duplicates of it. I know some people are like, no, well, if you've got one in your collection, why do you need two? Maybe a time will come that I'll have to pass it on to a new home when I run out of space for plants. But at the moment, I'm really appreciating it. It's, it's very easy to care for. I really like it. And yeah, doing all the good things. But then here, so this is... This is the Maranta Lemon Lime, the one that you've seen cuttings of literally everywhere in my flat and will continue to see cuttings of. This is the one that I chopped up recently because I couldn't quite work out what was going wrong with it. So it was doing really well when I first moved in. And then all of a sudden it just went very, very, very curly, which usually signals to me it needs a drink. I gave it a really good drink and it didn't help. It didn't help at all. It stayed really curly and I was like, oh God, if you watched my repot and chat recently, then you'll probably have seen. I took it out of the pot and I had a look at the roots. The roots looked fine and I was like, what's going on? So I changed its soil and I took the risk and gave it another water, which is something that I am usually quite tentative to do if I have just watered a plant because obviously it can lead to nasty things such as root rot. And it took a couple of days, but then the rest of the plants did uncurl. But in that time, because it didn't happen within, within a day, I got a bit freaked out and I decided to essentially chop it up. So it's now very small, but I, I want to say it's healthy. I want to say it's going to continue to grow for me. 
I'm feeling a little bit gutted that I did chop it up now. I'm kind of wishing that I just left it, but at the end of the day, I just kind of wanted to ensure that I didn't lose the plant. So now I'm either going to have lots of them or I'm going to be potting them all back into that same pot and, and I'm going to be doing it that way. But then the last plant, the last plant in the room is this sedum tornado. And I don't, I mean, to be honest, I really like this plant. It's such an easy one that I think because it doesn't require much care and I don't really do a lot to it, I maybe don't take the time to appreciate it as much as I could. The thing that I do love about it is if you look at the top of it there, the top point where it starts to grow from almost looks like little green flowers, which I think is gorgeous. But yeah, it's a relatively fast grower as well for a succulent and that's all I've really got to say about that one to be honest. I think it's lovely, I appreciate it and I enjoy it when I get it down to water it but it's it's not one, it's not one of my favourite plants, let's just say that. But yes, that is, oh my goodness, that took a while. That is all of the plants currently in this room and I do have more to show you. Um, so I'm just going to get the chair and the table back in place and then I will take you through and I will show you some of the others. I'm just going to take this Calathea through to the bathroom as well with the other spider mighty plant that is currently in there so that I can give it a wash off and a treatment. Oh, this one. Hang on, we'll come back to that. Uh, my big ZZ plant. Again, this is an area in my house that doesn't really get much natural light as you can tell. Like it doesn't have any windows, it's just a corridor. But this plant is just so robust, it's so easy to care for. It grows incredibly slowly, but I did actually buy this one big. I got it from, I got it from b and I think. And I just, I just wanted to have something green in this area. It's probably one of the only plants, maybe a cast iron plant, but one of the only plants that would do well in this spot. So yeah, I do like the ZZ plant. I really want to get a ZZ Raven as well, which is the really dark one, I think. They're so cool and it's one on my wish list. Um, but also the pot, my lovely friend JB that I told you about with the plant shelf, he's Mindfulness Reclaimed on YouTube. He made me this little planter as well. He's so, so clever. And granted, this doesn't particularly fit in this. I should have probably used this for a smaller pot. But when you stand back, I still think, I still think it looks quite nice. And I usually don't really like the kind of just standard nursery pots, the orangey ones, but sometimes just a little splash of color, I don't mind too much. So yeah, as I say, I'll link his YouTube channel down below because he's fabulous and he teaches you how to build all this sort of stuff if you're like me and are not very good at that sort of thing. Um, but so the bathroom doesn't have many plants because again, it doesn't have any windows. I only really keep plants in here that are in here for rehab or ones that I switch out quite a lot and are very low light plants. So I'm gonna pop my Calathea down there. Um, and this is my Sodoroy Af. So this is the one that I was telling you about that is also suffering very badly with spider mites. And I just haven't had much luck with this plant in general. It's just, it feels like it's just been one thing after another. And I do love it. And when I first got it, I thought its foliage was just stunning but the longer I've had it which I think is probably about a year now it has given me new growth but all of its new growth has has been a little bit like that a little bit deformed and I'm kind of thinking that now it's come to the point where I might just chop this plant up and start again I've been kind of back and forth in my head about whether or not that's the right thing to do but I think this, I mean, it doesn't look like a healthy plant, does it? And I think the fact that there's been issue after issue after issue, I'm kind of thinking it's probably, the soil's not right for it. There might be something going on with the roots that I don't know about. I haven't actually checked the roots for a while. So, so yeah, I think I'm probably going to treat it for spider mites, get rid of the foliage, or maybe not all the foliage, but the majority the majority of the foliage that's looking like that, that's definitely going. And then I'm going to repot it, take a look at the roots and then chop. That is my thoughts. If you have any suggestions on that, let me know. But that's what I'm thinking right now. And that's kind of what I did with my Gloriosum. And as I say, I really don't regret that decision. I love my Gloriosum so much more now that I decided to do it, even though it was scary at the time. So yeah, this is this is the zone where they come to go into the bath and get treated and then uh, eventually make it back into general population. <laughs> um, but up here, I've just got, these are the only two plants in my bathroom. I've got a Sansevieria Laurentii, 
which is a plant that does very, very well in pretty much no light. I mean, if I was to have the door closed all the time, then it probably wouldn't do well because obviously all plants do require at least some natural light to live. And then I've got a little ZZ plant. And as I say, that is one that just survives in pretty much no light as well. But I do take these plants out and I do put them by the window from time to time. I try to leave this door open as much as possible, especially if I've just showered. I often leave the door open for the humidity to spread through because it's much cheaper than running a humidifier. Um, so they do get some light, but it's very, very, very low light. But yes, those are the only plants currently in the bathroom. I'd love to be able to have more. Like I've got this shelf and I would just love to be able to have more of them along there. Oh, hello. Um, and I'm kind of thinking that maybe I could get like a little shelf and run some grow lights underneath and create a little zone for them. Because again, humidity wise, I know that I know that the plants would just love that. So I don't know. I'm I'm thinking on that. I'm still kind of figuring figuring things out in my new flat. Um, but going through to the bedroom, this isn't, <laughs> so this is the room that I feel like I've got a lot more space for plants and you might, I mean, if you're not a planty person, you might think, whoa, no, there's loads of plants in here. For me, I'm like, no, there's so much space. So let's start over here. So the empty spot here is where the Calathea, the, my Calathea Misto usually goes, but I said earlier, I've swapped that out now. I quite like it where I've left it. So space for a plant there. Uh, and then this is a Calathea bulmarxii, which is also known as a never never plant. And the leaves of this one are just so striking. Like it's just, I, I find it such, and this is gonna be a weird thing to say, but I find it such a calming plant to look at. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I know Calatheas do have the most incredible range of markings on their leaves and they are very, very diverse plants. But there's something about this one, it's almost like, a kind of soft baby blue that I just love. And yeah, I really love it here. I'm hoping it's gonna be happy here. It was down in my basement bedroom before. And to be honest, it's probably getting more natural light here than it was there. So I'm thinking it's probably gonna be fine. Um, but this one is a Monstera Pinati Partita. Oh, I think I actually said that right. I always call it a Pinati Parsha. I don't know why I've just got it in my head that that is what it's called. Um, but it's a Pinati Partita. And this, very similar to the Monstera Peru that I spoke about earlier, is one that I think would definitely benefit from a moss pole. I've got it climbing the wall at the moment just because if you look here, I've got loads of these little command not command hook, the twisty hook things. And I did have my big pothos climbing up the wall here when I first moved in, but my pothos was not happy about that. And we will get onto that plant in a minute because she's not looking great. She just wasn't happy in that spot. And I was just thinking it is definitely more aesthetic for me, the fact that she's there and it's not really fair on the plant. So I moved her. I actually ended up chopping her completely back, but I did have some sticky bits already on the wall. So this I think is probably just a temporary measure, even though I do think it looks nice. I would like to get this plant on a pole and I would love it to start fenestrating because, oh my goodness, when these plants are mature and they have been able to kind of develop good aerial roots in a pole, their fenestration looks beautiful. So that is, that is the plan for that plant. And here I've got, oh, this is one I couldn't remember the name of, uh, pe Peperomia Ice Queen. I think it's a Peperomia Ice Queen. It's either a Peperomia Ice Queen or a Peperomia Frosty Queen or something like that. But again, this plant is just amazing. It looks, in fact, I'll bring it into the light so that you can see it a little bit better. But the color of its leaves, they're actually glittery. Do you know what I mean? It's, I mean, I know it has got a bit of damage on it. That's just damage that it came with, but on the whole, I think the plant is actually doing really well. It's just given me some lovely new growth in there. And granted, it's not quite as big as the growth down here, but I haven't had this plant for that long. So I think it's probably just still adjusting. And sometimes when that is happening, the plant doesn't give you kind of a super mature growth because it's just trying to figure things out in its new environment. Um, and then here I've got a Hoya curtisii. So this was a full plant potted with quite a few cuttings to just kind of pack it out. I got one from House of Kojo a little while ago and it, to be honest, it wasn't in the best condition. And it's rare that I say that about House of Kojo because I think their plants are amazing, but it wasn't looking great. And so I chopped some strands of it up. I propagated them. I also picked up some more cuttings at the plant swap recently. And I've just kind of kept going and going and going with her. And now she's looking beautiful and full, which I'm really happy about because 
I, I don't know. I just, I, at one point I was like, do I just, do I just pass her on to somebody else? Because I was kind of giving up hope, but I love her. I love her little leaves and I really did like the plant. So I'm very glad that I stuck it out. But yeah, like I know they're very compact and together, but just look at the shape of them. Aren't they unusual? And again, very splashy variegation, just kind of glittery again. I think that's the thing about the splashy variegation. It does just kind of look like someone's just kind of flicked flicks little bits of glitter onto it, which I really like. And then here, this is a plant that I love, but has been oh, damaged by the tail. This was a plant that was on the floor for a while. It is no longer a floor plant because I, I yeah, I should have learnt my lesson by now. But this is an Anthurium caraceum, and I just love the long strappy Anthuriums. I think this one is gorgeous. And before this one, the only Anthurium that I'd had similar in structure was the Anthurium jungle bush or jungle king. I don't actually know that one's Latin name, but I loved the way that that one grew. I thought it was really gorgeous. And I saw this one and I was like, yeah, this is a bit of me. And it is also one of, I would say one of my fastest growing Anthuriums besides the SP Le Mans, the one that I've got in my cabinet. It's given me so much new growth since I've got it. I've only had this one about six months, I would say. And I think it had maybe three or four leaves when I first got it. I did lose a couple of the original ones, but again, as a plant acclimates, that can just sometimes happen. But it's given me so much new growth and in fact, you can see it's actually getting ready to give me a new leaf there as well, which is very exciting. And then up here, I've got my philodendron micans, and this was a rescue one when I bought it anyway. This came from Fermoy's Garden Centre when I went and did a houseplant tour thing there. It came off their rescue shelf, and I've got to say, for a rescue plant, it came in brilliant condition. There was just a little bit of damage on some of the leaves, but it's filled out a lot, and on the whole, I would say it's doing fairly well. I have been saying for a while, I think I might just take some cuttings and, again, plant them back up and get it a little bit fuller because, not that it's doing badly, there's just there's just some leaves that, I mean, not that one specifically, that's just water damage, but there's just some leaves that aren't looking, in fact, that one looks ready to come off. Yep, there we go. Aren't looking as great as they could be. And again, I think this is probably just because this plant has gone through stages of neglect whilst it's been in my care. And I don't want to admit that, but it has. There's been times, especially recently when I was moving house, that I... I, I, I was just trying to figure everything out with having loads of plants and that did mean that some kind of fell under my radar and this very sadly, oh, still holding the leaf, this very sadly was one of those plants, but it has bounced back well and I, it's definitely, as I say, it's definitely not unhealthy. It just needs, needs a little bit of TLC. But the thing I really love about the Mycans, it's almost like a slightly smaller version of the Milano Chrysum, but it's much cheaper to buy and definitely much faster growing as well. But it's got the gorgeous, gorgeous velvety leaves and that beautiful gold venation. But yeah, it is a plant that I love and it does, it does make me very happy. Um, and then this one. So if you've been watching my channel for a while, then you'll remember the plant that I found in the skip. It is a Thormatophyllum bipinacifidum, which I think was previously classed as philodendron. And this is, this is it now. It's doing so well. And it's, I've said it before, this is probably one of the hardiest plants I have ever encountered. Like this plant has been through wind, rain, being chopped back to nothing, having its root system chopped back because I did take its roots right back as well. It seems pretty much unkillable in my experience. And I think that's why I swapped it out with the Caraceum because I know that any plant on ground level is probably gonna get a little bit battered by the tail, but this one just kind of takes it. Like it hasn't had any leaf breakage as far as I know, and it's just very robust. So actually this would be like ultimate beginner plant in my opinion. But yeah, I love it. And I love how it's just kind of growing very wild. It is obviously very tree-like in its structure. And I think at some point, from what I've seen when I Google pictures of big ones, I think at some point it will kind of properly turn into a very big bushy tree, which I'm excited about. Uh, and then, oh, talk of the tail. Ah, that's a telling sign, isn't it? Yoli's toy and oh, another lost leaf. See, this is a plant. This is my pink princess philodendron. This is a plant that is not that hardy and should not be on the floor. I should definitely raise her up. But also, this just isn't the best position for her. And this is a plant that has given me quite a lot of struggles in the time that I've moved. Again, if you saw her before I moved, you'll have seen she had beautiful pink half moon leaves on both of these leaves. 
And I think at the moment she's just not getting adequate light. I think come summer again, she'll be fine. But I'm kind of thinking I should do the same as what I've done with my white princess next door and get some kind of grow light system coming down onto her because at the moment, I, she was used to such high light before. I, I just don't think this is cutting it. And she is giving me new growth, but and the new growth doesn't look unhealthy. It just, I don't know. I don't know. She's just becoming a little bit stretched and leggy. And that's definitely not what I wanted for this plant because she is magnificent. She's another one that I've grown from a one leaf cutting. And I just feel very attached to the plants that I've grown from small babies. I feel like if anything starts happening to them, I'm like, oh my goodness, this is, I mean, obviously it's a lot of the time my fault anyway, but this is totally my fault because I've let you down, I've nurtured you, and now I failed you. So yes, we're, we're working on that. And again, she's another one. She is still currently flowering, but I have taken off, oops, all of her other flowers just because I wanted her to be able to conserve some energy and I didn't think producing flowers right now was probably the best thing for this plant but again I left this one on just to just to show you in this video and if you want to see what they look like open I did take a picture of a couple that I chopped back and that is on my Instagram um so yeah I think that flower again I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna take back it does make me sad to do it but in the grand scheme of things for the sake of the health of the plant Wow, that's a tongue twister. For the sake of the health of the plant, <laughs> I felt like it was the right thing to do. So yeah, and then here you've seen my standard green Wyetii. This is my Hoya Wyetii tricolor and I got it on a gorgeous trellis. And I, again, I know I'm saying I've got discount codes for everything. I do have a discount code for these trellises. My begonia next door was on one of these trellises as well. But this plant, I think it's doing all right. I think this top section of growth up here is not looking fantastic actually. I need to have a proper look at that. But I think the majority of the plant is looking fairly healthy. Again, it is a variegated plant and perhaps I should have it in slightly higher light. It is literally facing the window. So it hasn't kicked up too much of a stink, but I hadn't actually noticed that these leaves had gone all curly and that's not typical of this plant. But nevertheless, as I say, the leaves are the leaves are beautiful. They've got the gorgeous length that you saw before, but they're almost kind of rainbowy. Like you can just see so many different tones in there and the new leaves come out so pink and then they fade and you're just left with lots of lots of lovely colours but nothing too much because I know I said for me I'm not a massive fan of colourful plants. I don't find it too overwhelming. I find it just just enough to give me my colour fix but I wouldn't personally want it to be any more. Um, but yeah, so that's all the ones over there. I'm also thinking of getting a plant shelf up on that wall. Obviously, I'd have to make sure they were plants that didn't mind dry air or I'd have to get a humidity system on that shelf as well. But I'd quite like to get some plants on there. I've got lots of lots of space still for plants, you see. Um, and then I've got mainly, or well, not mainly propagations, a lot of propagations down here. But this one is my Philodendron Ernestii mother plant. So this is the one that produced the plant that you've already seen. And this one isn't doing quite so well. It's, it's not doing awfully, but as you can see, its leaves are just a little bit kind of crinkly. They don't look as conditioned and lovely as the other plant. So this one is just kind of, I guess, in rehab zone. I'm letting it grow and I just keep taking bits off it and propagating to make new plants. And... Although that's probably not what a lot of people would do. A lot of people would probably just focus on this plant. I do often find that, as I've said many times, chopping a plant up and starting again can actually be a great way to get it back to health. So, so yeah, as I say, it's not bad. It's not giving me any kind of dramatic issues. I just, I know the plant very well and I can tell that it's not totally happy. <laughs> um, and then I've got, oh, I actually forgot about these and I need to get rid of some moulds down there as well. Um, I think this is String of Hearts Silver Glory down here. And yes, as I say, not going to lie, I had completely forgotten that this was even here. So that'll need some attention because it hasn't had water for a while. And I think lighting wise, it's pretty much OK. I put these plastic sheeting pieces on the window because firstly, obviously, it just gives me gives me a bit of privacy in my bedroom. But also it just helps to insulate the window a little bit, meaning that I can have foliage kind of touching it and it's not going to get cold damaged. And also then with direct sunlight, this window doesn't actually get that much direct sunlight, but with direct sunlight, it would just mean that the foliage is much less likely to burn. So very good things to invest in. And you can also use bubble wrap if you don't have these sticky pieces. Bubble wrap is a great alternative. Uh, and then, oh, oh dear, oh dear. Okay, 
Okay, this doesn't look great, does it? So this is a Black Pagoda Ace Cananthus Marmoratus cutting that I took a very long time ago. A very long time ago, and I put it in this thing, and I forgot about it. And you can tell by the state of the water, ooh, yuck, that it definitely needs changing. And oh my god, it has actually tried to flower in there as well. Goodness me, yeah, I do need to sort that one out, pot it up, change its water at the very least, um, and probably remove those flowers because I can see them starting to rot, and then the whole thing will likely be doomed. But I was going to say this one, so this is a plant that was sent to me uh, by a family friends very recently before Christmas, and it's a pineapple plant, and as you can tell, it's not looking amazing. It's definitely going to be a little bit of a project to get this one back to health because I've never owned this plant before and I don't really know a lot about it. Again, if any of you have this plant or know anything about it, then by all means drop drop some advice down below. I'd really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, it definitely needs a good prune. It definitely needs its roots checking. It does, and I've checked it very thoroughly every day since I've had it. It does look to be pest free. Um, I have obviously taken the risk putting it around other plants and I've spoken about this a lot recently. When you do have a lot of plants, it's very hard to be able to actually isolate and unless I just want to keep this in the middle of the room where it's going to be an absolute target for Yoli's tail, it's just more practical to just kind of give it a thorough check and take the risk. I did give it a really good wash over with horticultural soap when I first got it and as I say, everything in that department seems fine but... But yeah, it's going to need a bit of love. Oh, oh, that's not good. That's mould. This makes me think that the plant might have started to rot. Oh dear. Yeah, can you see the end of that? That's properly mushy. Uh, okay, so this is probably going to be a root rot slash stem rot treatment. I will have to think about that. Um, if you want to see a video on that, let me know. I will happily make one because, oh, yeah, it seems like I'm probably going to be doing that very soon. And actually, I don't know. That does look like, I obviously, <laughs> I'm not going to get into plant care now, but that looks so bad. I'm not sure if there's going to be coming back from that. Oh my God, the leaves are just lifting right out. Oh no. Okay, right. I will, I'll deal with that afterwards because that plant's obviously not doing well. Um, and then I've got another Maranta lemon lime cutting. As I say, I chopped up the plants, well, most of the plants, and I'm propagating lots of bits of it. I love its foliage. I've spoken about it already, so I won't say too much. And then I've got another Philodendron Milano chrysum, and this is one that just really isn't, well, I mean, it's, it's not doing badly now, but it hasn't been doing very good things for me. And the wet sticks that I showed you in the propagation box came from this plant. I'm growing it in pond and I have such a love-hate relationship with semi-hydroponics. Like for propagation, different kettle of fish, but pond for full plants has just not given me, on its own when I literally just use it by itself, has not given me the most success. So it was kind of like an experiment and I'm kind of thinking it's not the right thing. I know it's not on a moss pole or anything either, so that doesn't help. But it's just there, again, waiting to be dealt with at the moment. And then, so propagations, I'm just going to kind of whiz through because I'm aware that this is a very long video and I have already talked about all of these plants already. So this is a Lepismium bolivianum, propagating in water. Usually I do soil, but I thought I would try water. A little mini cactus that, again, I don't know the ID on. It kind of, I think it might have been sold to me as a spiralis, but I don't know if anybody could confirm. That would be great. And then fishbone cactus, again, I usually propagate this one in water, but uh, in soil, sorry, but for some reason this time I'm, I'm doing water and kind of looks like that little aerial root might have started to do something, but um, I love the fishbone cactus. I just, I just showed you the full plant. Syngonium albo in the process of chopping the whole thing up and this is just another bit of it. Philodendron brantianum, in fact, these are both philodendron brantianum. These were just sections of growth that I just was like, it's not looking amazing. Why don't I try and get a new healthy plant going from these ones? So, so that's what we're doing here. Those are the water propagations there. And then this is a Sansevieria fernwood micado. And again, a very low maintenance plant. It is a snake plant and snake plants really don't need a lot of care. This one seems very happy in the spot that it's in. 
I water it maybe about once a month, but it's very low maintenance. And I just, again, this might be a reason for some people not to like it, but I really like the texture of it, but I do get how it also kind of just maybe looks like grass. I don't know, I really like it. Um, and then this one, this is actually, this is a plant that I've had for years. And I picked this up originally in Wilco, 2018, 2019. And I did give it a chop back a while ago. And I did also struggle with stem rot on this plant. So it, it's had to be lopped back a few times, but I'm pretty sure it's a prickly pear cactus. That's one, ironically, that I've had for a very long time. And I actually haven't taken the time to properly know its name. I'm pretty sure it's a prickly pear. Um, but it's growing in a slightly funny way. I also have a feeling it might be a variegated prickly pear. Ooh, spooky. If you have a look there, you can see little kind of splotchy bits of variegation. Um, but yeah, it's growing quite strangely. I don't feel like I've got a massive emotional attachment to that plant, to be completely honest, but it does make me happy to see it doing well. And I'm glad that it's still growing for me, despite the battles that I've been through with it. So yeah, I think, again, happy in that spot. It is a cactus and this is a fairly highlight spot. So yeah, all is good there. Um, and then my jade plant here. So this one, this one I just feel so proud of because I've grown it from something less than that size. Like when I first potted this one up, I think I only had two or three leaves. And as you can tell, it's turning into a proper little tree now. And it's been so incredibly easy to look after. Again, it's very drought tolerant, so I haven't, I haven't had to water it that much. It just kind of likes being left in a spot where it's happy to do its thing. And it has also given me a lot of little babies in the time that I've had it as well. I've taken lots of cuttings, I've taken leaf propagations. It's just a really great plant. Again, another fantastic beginner one. They are, however, quite susceptible to overwatering. That's the only thing I'll say. Apart from that, it doesn't need like mega bright sunlight. In fact, if you do put it in mega bright sunlight, it'll start to go quite sun stressed. Like if you see jade plants grown outside, for example, often their leaves are a lot rounder and they've got kind of red edges. The foliage is a lot lighter. And this is often just because they are getting a little bit too much light. So again, filtered light, filtered bright indirect light is the best thing for this plant. And then here I've got my absolute beast of a euphorbia. This is my euphorbia acrorensis. And this one, oh my goodness, has blown my mind how quickly it grows. I've said this before, but it grows like an aroid. It is so crazy quick. I know it looks like a cactus, but it's actually not a cactus. Oh, oh, sorry, I've just seen someone's had an accident outside. Oh, bless him, I think he's okay, but I'm just gonna stop filming for a second in case they think that I'm filming him. <laughs> Okay, right, we're back and the sun's coming out, yay. I can't actually remember where I got to with this plant now. I think, I think I said that it was a succulent and not actually a cactus and that's why it grows so quickly. It looks like a big beefy cowboy cactus and it is actually known as the cowboy cactus, but it is not. When I look back at photos of this plant from even this time last year, I am absolutely amazed as to how much it's grown. It was only about that high and none of this branching was there. It only had, I think, two very tiny branches. If I can find a photo, I'll put it in so that you can see the difference. But I mean, it's getting on to be the height of me. It's absolutely, I mean, not quite. It probably comes up to my chest, but it's absolutely huge. And yes, I love it very much. So moving around to this planty area, I can never remember the name of this one. I think it's a dipsis lutisans or something like that and it's supposedly a very easy care plant and i'm not saying i'm not saying it's difficult but as you can see it just it always has browning tips and i just that's something that i haven't really been able to figure out i feel like it gets the right amount of water it gets the right amount of light in my opinion i've tried it in several different spots it's got good humidity but it always seems to just be kicking up a little bit of a stink and I have chopped it back several times. It also maybe doesn't help that it does get whacked by the tail quite a lot, but it is a plant that can take a bit of whackage because it's got good flexibility. Um, but then, oh, okay, so the pothos, the one I told you about that was over there previously climbing the wall and I decided to chop up because it wasn't doing very well. 
is, I mean, I do need to take the yellow leaves off, but it is doing, it is doing a bit better now. As I say, I gave it a really good chop back. I just took a look at its root system and I changed its pot because it did definitely need a bigger pot. But I do, as I say, I do need to get these yellow leaves off. And although you, you might just think that's an aesthetic thing, it actually signals to pests that the plant's not healthy and can actually attract pests. Hence why you have yellow sticky traps and stuff like that. So that is another thing on my list of things to do. And that's not exactly a difficult job. I could have done it before this video, but hey ho, I thought I'd just show you her looking like that because it's realistic. Um, and then the cabinet. So this cabinet might not be as interesting as the last one. This is just mainly propagations in here and there's not a huge amount. I mean, there probably is stuff to talk about, but I won't go through it in great length if it's not that interesting. Um, but this one is a Hoya, I think it's a Hoya Pubera and I got it as a cutting a little while ago just again because I'd never had this type of Hoya before and I was really intrigued by it. It also doesn't feel like a Hoya, like you know how earlier I said Hoyas were very robust and some other plants you kind of feel like you could squeeze their leaves and they'd pop? That's kind of how this one feels. So yeah, very different to other Hoya in my collection and I think it has rooted. Yeah, it's rooted really nicely in there and I could probably pot it up, but it's just living its cabinet life at the moment and seems pretty happy. And then this is another philodendron golden dragon cutting. I know I said I did chop this plant up with the idea of actually giving it all away because I wasn't loving it. This is a section, oh, there goes a fungus gnat. This is a section that I'm propagating and I probably will pass on to somebody else, to be honest, because I'm really happy with how my other plants doing. I guess I could pot them together, but I haven't done that yet. And I don't know how I feel about that. So I will decide on that at another point. Um, but all of these pothos cuttings in the back here, they are basically all just propagating in moss at the moment. And I'm actually doing a little soil experiment that I'm going to be documenting. I'm basically going to be planting all, all of them in different types of soil and seeing how their growth is affected. And I think that'll be quite interesting just to kind of take a deeper dive into soil science. Um, but yeah, so at the moment I'm just keeping them all in identical conditions. They all came from the same plants. They were all mid cuttings and they're all at a very similar stage at the moment. So I'm going to be starting that in the next few weeks and I'm really excited about that. So if you fancy seeing how I get on with that and what I discover, then make sure to subscribe to my channel. Um, but this one here, so this is actually an Anthurium regal. Not that you would know that by looking at it here. I got it at the Rare Plant Festival and it had been a wish list plant of mine for such a long time. And I got it home and literally within the space of 24 hours, its beautiful big leaf just completely died back and I had to chop it off. And I was so sad about that. So I checked its roots, I transferred it to moss, I did a little bit of root pruning because there was, uh, there was a, it wasn't completely rotten, but there was a little bit of sludge there. And then a few months ago, it started giving me this growth point. And I thought to myself, amazing, it's going to start giving me a new leaf. And it just kind of seems to have frozen in its tracks. It hasn't really done much since then. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm just leaving it in the cabinet for now. I'm keeping its moss fairly hydrated. I am hoping that it will start to do something for me soon because it is a plant that I'm very excited about. It is one that I don't really feel like I've got in my collection at the moment because I I can't see it, I can't appreciate it. But when it does start growing, I will be very excited about this. Uh, and then this one, so this is, or I can show you the leaf. I'm actually slightly mystified about what this plant is. So that's what it looks like. And I thought it was an Atabapawense, but then a lot of you were saying, no, it's not. And then I looked up the Atabapawense and it doesn't look like that at all. So I'm thinking it could potentially be a Billetier bell marks hybrid or something i'm not entirely sure and i should actually speak to my friend who i got it off and find out i meant to do that before this video but i completely forgot i will send her a message before this video goes out and i will find out what it is and i'll put the name on the screen so that you can see but as you can see it has got a beautiful new leaf there and it is rooted really well as well so i'm thinking at some point i'll probably pot that with this this is in really bad quality soil at the moment it's absolutely rock solid and it just looks quite cheap so I think I'm gonna swap that out give it a soil upgrade and hopefully get a really beautiful healthy plant going and then on this shelf so I've got a decidua watermelon these were just cuttings that I think again I got on Etsy just propagating in moss they are giving me some beautiful growth so again 
I think they're probably ready to be potted. I'd really love to get a full plant of this going and I know that they're not expensive to buy as full plants, but I'd quite like to do it all from cuttings. So I think what I'll probably do is let this one grow a bit, cut some of those sections, propagate them and hopefully eventually end up with a gorgeous full plant. But I think its leaves are just so pretty. You can see why it's got watermelon in the name. It's just very, very watermelony and succulent and just beautiful. I'm really excited about it. And I am just gonna pop it down here, probably with some of these others to clear a bit of space. Uh, and all of these little ones here are Pilia peperomioides, as I say, my mother plant, which doesn't actually exist anymore. I'll tell you about that when we get to it. Um, but my mother plant is constantly popping out little babies and, I do have a lot in my collection already. I do sometimes keep them back for myself, but because they're so constant, unless I wanted a house filled with this plant, that's probably not the best idea. So I tend to propagate these and then give them away to people as little presents. And I think they make nice little presents. They're such pretty little plants. So yeah, all of those have only been potted up in the last few days actually. So they're happily propagating in the cabinet and I hope in the next, I mean, month or so, they're very fast to grow in the next month or so, then hopefully they will start to look like lovely mature or maturer plants. And then this is another variegated Monstera albo, and oh my goodness, just look at the balance of white on this. It's crazy. It gave me that completely full moon leaf I want to say like four months ago or something. And to be completely honest, that is a lot longer than they usually hold on. Usually that leaf would have died off by now. And then it gave me that one afterwards. And I was like, okay, there is hope. And it's just given me that. And although I can appreciate that that is such a stunningly beautiful leaf, it's such a stunningly beautiful plant. It just, it's not really sustainable. As I say, the white doesn't contain any chlorophyll whatsoever. So although it looks pretty for a while, it just doesn't last forever. But yeah, I'm very impressed with how long it's kept going. And the plant clearly has good genes, but I think it could probably do with a complete chop back to the point, the point where the variegation is a little bit more balanced in the hope that it produces a nicer balance of white and green. Um, but nevertheless, it is stunning, isn't it? You can't say that it's not beautiful. Um, and then at the back here, I've got some Hoya Matilde cuttings, which again have propagated. Also, I've just seen another fungus gnat. This is the thing with cabinet spaces. They do tend to kind of congregate because obviously it's warm, it's humid, and it's like a breeding zone for fungus gnats. So I do need to also deal with them. I haven't had them in a while, but I feel like they are coming back. Um, but yeah, Hoya Matilde, again, I've shown you a little cutting of this already. It's a really beautiful plant. Again, I'd really love to get a full plant of that going, but... I'm just, again, I'm doing it with propagations. I'm gonna just kind of chop, prop, replant, chop, prop, chop, prop, chop, plop, chop, prop, replant. Um, but actually it's giving me some really nice growth. Look how shiny that leaf is. It's so gorgeous. And this begonia, so again, I know I say I'm not a massive begonia person. Oh, and it's got a, a leaf that's looking ready to come off. Is that gonna come off? Nope, it can just stay there for the time being. Um, this begonia is one that I again don't know the name of, so I'm gonna have to, I got that off the same friends that I got the thing that I thought was an Atabapoense off. I got that off her as well, and I can't remember the name of it, so again, I will ask her and I'll put the name on the screen. But as I say, I'm not a massive begonia person, but when I was at her house, I just saw it and I was like, wow, that is absolutely incredible. And she just said, well, if you want some cuttings, I can give you some. And I was like, you know what, why not? Why not? So yeah, it's bringing me a lot of joy actually. And I'm really excited to watch it grow. I think the shininess and the iridescence of its leaves is incredible. And I love how it kind of just changes color, like depending on how you look at it. Sometimes it looks red, sometimes it looks green. Like if you look at that leaf on the right, just catching the light there. It's beautiful, it's so metallic and yeah, it's amazing. So that again, oh wow, has rooted really well. Look at all of those roots. Yeah, that is definitely ready to be potted up. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about that one. And it's not a plant that I would usually go for because again, it's it doesn't look at any anymore, but it is fairly colorful. And I sometimes find that a little bit jarring. Um, but next to it, oh, this is a bit sad, isn't it? And this is a Syngonium confetti tricolor, uh, which I got in a plant swap with my friend Lisa. And Lisa, if you're watching, I'm really sorry. <laughs> this plant has not done well. I... I'm not gonna lie, I think I just, I think, yeah, I know this is all my fault. I just didn't pay this plant enough attention. As I say, I've really gone off Syngoniums and I should have just passed it along to somebody else who would have loved it more. That's what I tend to do with the majority of my plants. 
But with this one, I think because we got it in our swap, I was like, nope, it's fine. I will, I'll grow to love it. I'll pop it in the cabinet, see how it does. And it, it just, I mean, it's been watered now. I watered everything in here about four or five days ago, but it's it dried out and it's done that. And I know I could absolutely chop it back to wet sticks and get some, get some new plants out of it that way. And in fact, I think that's probably the state that it's in at the moment. I think that's probably going to be my best bet. So that's the plan for that one. And then this is, so it's a Peperomia Ginny. And I thought it was called a Peperomia Jelly. And everybody laughed at me when I said that in the video where I showed you it last time. But I Googled it. And if you type in Peperomia Jelly, it does come up. And I just think Jelly is a very fitting name for it because it kind of looks like a jelly bean. Again, this is one that I think is like a good colorful plant for me because it's got that beautiful pink rim around the edges of the leaves, but it's not too overpowering. I think uh, the green on it as well is almost kind of a bluey green. It's really pretty. And this is the kind of colorful plant that I like. So yeah, it's not doing much for me at the moment. It has pretty sure, oh yeah, it has rooted, but no new growth as of yet. So just keeping it in the cabinet and excited to see what it does at some point. Oh, and what is this one? What is this one? This is a Hoya Carnosa Shirley splash, I think. I'll check that and I'll make sure the name on the screen's right. But that's what I was sold it as. And I think just when I was looking for a pubicarlic splash, which actually this kind of looks like as well. So I'm confused. Can anyone confirm or deny? Um, but I was looking for a pubicarlic splash and this one came up and I was like, oh, I love how splashy it is. I love that silver variegation. I love the structure of the leaf. I think it's just a really, a really lovely Hoya. So, so yeah, it is, it is again, oh wow, very well rooted and it's just kind of holding tight in the cabinet for now. The cabinet is honestly, it is the best thing for propagation because it's got such high light. Again, I was gonna say I'm using the mother grow light bars in my cabinet. I've just switched them out recently so that all of them are now mother grow lights before I was just using the top one as a mother grow light. And I'm so in love with them. I did all levels. As I say, I do have a mother grow light discount code, which I will link down in the description box below, but it's just keeping all of these plants really, really happy. And again, I do usually run a fan. I've just turned it off because it's so ridiculously loud when I try and film with the fan on. Um, but air circulation is just really important to help mold and stuff like that to stop mold, sorry, to stop mold from building up. Um, and as you can see, I don't actually know what the humidity was when I opened the door, but it's usually around the 80 to 90 mark. And even with the door open, it's currently at 78, which is pretty crazy. Um, but the top shelf, I might need to take a few things out to show you everything in here because it is a little bit packed. Uh, but this is just a philodendron florida green i've got it in moss and it's been in moss for a very long time but it hasn't actually rooted which is slightly annoying i was hoping it might root a little bit quicker it's funny actually because my florida beauty rooted way faster and i've heard that they can be a little bit more temperamental but we'll see how that one goes and fingers crossed it does stuff for me soon and then these are the Pothos Enjoy cuttings that I am planning on potting up with my very sad looking Enjoy at the moment. In fact, I think they are probably ready to be potted up. I will do that soon. I think once I've got it going as a nice full plant, I'll be able to just appreciate it a little bit better because my <laughs> supposedly, well, my potted plant at the moment is just one strand. So, so yes. Uh, and then this is again another bit of my philodendron gloriosum that I chopped up and this was just a little chunk and literally this is very good timing in the last couple of days it's just opened its first little leaf and I love the gloriosum so much but the new leaves on it they're just so diddy and so pretty and I'm wondering if I should uh, I'm wondering if I should pot them all together and like do lots of crawlers in the same pot to make it look more full or if I should just do lots of separate plants. I'm very undecided about that at the moment, um, but I think they are all ready to be potted nonetheless, so maybe I'll do them all together. I guess I can always separate them if I don't like it. Um, but, ooh, okay, so this is a variegated Epipremnum amplissimum, and I chopped it back, basically, it came, when I first got it, it was variegated, and it started to lose its variegation very quickly. I chopped it back several times because I wanted to try and encourage the variegation to no avail, that didn't work. And I've just noticed its new leaf that literally wasn't unfurled yesterday at all has got variegation on it. Yay. 
Okay, I think it's too soon to tell, but I thought that one might do as well. I am so happy that it's not fully reverted. Oh, that excites me because this was a plant that just, it wasn't exciting me that much. I thought maybe I'd rehome it. I know a lot of people do love the Amplissimum and it's not that I don't love it. I've just got a lot of plants that are very similar and I thought that maybe it could bring someone else joy. But now I think I might need to hold on to it for a bit longer and just see what it does for me because that, that is exciting right there. And this, so this is the little allocation nebula that I got in the rescue box from Grow Tropicals and I did decide to chop its leaf off. So obviously there's not a lot to show at the moment. Its leaf was just very, very curly and it did look like the plant was kind of going dormant. So I thought I'd chop it back, pop it in the cabinet and just see what happened. I mean, I've had a lot of luck in the past with allocations that go into dormancy, putting them in this kind of perfect environment for them and they do start to give me some lovely new growth. So... I have faith that it's going to be fine, but just look at its stem. Isn't that amazing? I did the unboxing with Sarah, who's also known as the plant rescuer, and she actually thought that the stem was just covered in soil. And to be honest, I kind of did as well, because you don't see that very often, variegation on the stem. I mean, I guess you think of plants like the zebrina, and you do then, but it's just very unusual. So I'm, I'm excited about that one. Um, and then this is the Rifidophora tetrasperma cutting that I was telling you about. This is the one that is a tissue culture one, as opposed to mine that you saw earlier that is not tissue culture. And as you can see, they grow so differently. Only two of the leaves actually have the splits in them and, oh, in fact, three. But the other ones are just kind of solid green leaves. And yeah, as I say, we just found, me and Emma just found this absolutely fascinating. So I'm seeing how this will grow for me here. And she's taken a cutting of my one and seeing how that one grows for her. So I'm just very intrigued about this. And I'm kind of thinking maybe, because I would love to have a plant climbing up that beam there, like I've got in the living room. And I really liked it before. I thought it looked really nice. I am thinking that maybe once this plant is a little bit bigger and it is such a fast grower that I might train it to climb up there. I don't know yet. I might be getting ahead of myself, as usual, but I think that would look nice. And then I've just got a, what is this called? A neon philodendron? <laughs> What's it called? My, the name has just completely gone from my brain. I honestly can't remember. Again, I'm gonna have to put the name on the screen. But again, maybe not a plant that I would typically go for just because it is very yellowy and not that there's anything wrong with that. I think it can look beautiful in other people's homes. It's just not one that usually I would go for, but I picked it up at the plant swap and I really like how it's growing. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to get to know this plant. I feel like it does, I was going to say kind of push me out of my comfort zone in terms of appearances a little bit but I don't think that's a bad thing. I'm definitely, I don't wanna be the sort of person that needs all of my plants to be green. And I guess this is kind of a shade of green. So I think I can get on board with it. And as I say, I'm enjoying watching it grow. And a lot of the time when I see a plant start to develop and its growth is very rewarding, I do kind of bond with that plant and form a relationship with it. And then, and then I love it. So I'd say I'm like 70% of the way there at the moment. I think uh, we're going to work on this relationship, but I think we're going to be fine. Um, and then I've got a Hoya, a variegated Hoya macrophylla. Ooh, I've got lots of Hoyas in here that need tendrilling. Uh, and this one again, it's propagating in moss. It has rooted, it could be potted, and it is actually just starting, ooh, the camera will focus, starting to give me a little bit of new growth. But I just think the macrophylla is so stunning. I love, again, similar to the Sarawak, I love its kind of like robust veination. It's just such a chunky, cool plant. And the fact that it's got those gorgeous variegated edges to it just really helps to like define the leaf. So I will definitely be getting this one on a trellis at some point soon. And yeah, I, I really enjoy it. I know some people, I did actually see the other day, someone had potted a load of Hoyas, like different types of Hoya together, including a variegated macrophylla. And again, while I can appreciate that, I think usually potting lots of plants together for me just makes me go oh no you can't appreciate the individual ones but maybe I'll try it maybe I will try it I'm undecided um and then okay so this the whole mystery of the Hoya gratzelis 
This one I had to get as well because this is supposedly also a Hoya Gratzelis. And I'm like, why do all of them look so different? They can't all be a true Gratzelis. So yeah, I got this one. It's a lot rounder. Its leaves are a lot rounder than the ones that I showed you in the living room. But I'm just, I'm intrigued to watch it grow and I'm excited to put them side by side once they are all a little bit, a little bit bigger. And I've had some new growth off them in the time that I've owned them, which this one is starting to do. And then I can do some digging and figure out, figure out what's what, because I don't like not knowing the plants in my collection. I know it doesn't really matter, but I, I don't know why I need to know that. That's just me being silly. Um, and then this, wow, has got really long and tenderly, and I did not realise quite how long and tenderly it had got. But this is a Hoya Caudata Sumatra. Yes, it is. Um, and again, I got this one secondhand plant from my friend who just fell out of love with it and was like, I know you really love the weird Hoyas. Would you like another one? And I didn't have it in my collection. So I, I said yes. And it, I know, again, it's not a pretty plant. It's definitely not a pretty plant. But as I say, I just the weird plants also just really do it for me. And this one just looks very, almost very prehistoric. Like its leaves are just, I want to say old like that's probably not the best way to to describe it or the most appealing thing to say about the plant but it does just kind of look like it's been lifted out of Jurassic Park but it is very very tenderly so yeah a trellis I would say a pretty immediate trellis for that one or else it's just going to get very leggy and I'm not going to get a lot of growth from it healthy growth anyway um but I'm going to leave them there and I'll deal with them after the video okay we haven't got that many more to do um, but this one is a philodendron, a philodendron Dean McDowell, and I only got this one fairly recently. I got the, I mean, I say fairly recently, I've had it less than a week. It was a wishlist plant of mine for such a long time, and I finally bit the bullet, and I got one from Grow Tropicals, and I do love Grow Tropicals. They've just got really interesting plants, and they had this one in stock, and yeah I just I couldn't resist so it's currently just kind of acclimating to the space I think it's got good lights where it is and I think it should be fairly happy here it is currently potted upright and as you can see in fact this is a great example of a crawling plant you can see it's trying to go along to the side so I do need to get this into a trough planter fairly soon I just don't like to repot my plants or really mess with them too much when I first get them because obviously they're just they're still adjusting to their new environment I don't want to do anything that's going to upset them any more than they already are so it's staying as is for now but I would say in the next couple of weeks I'll start to play around with it a little bit and it does also have such a beautiful new leaf unfurling which I'm really excited about. But then my little grow shelf, I set this up, I set this up for one of my Patreon videos fairly recently and I was looking at the shelf and it had lots of stuff on it before, like storage, and I was like, you know what, I was like, it's a really decent sized shelf, things could be done here. So I've just mounted, these are just cheap Amazon grow lights, but I've just mounted them up there and they seem to so far be doing the job and again it's very early days but things do seem relatively happy. And so in this in this container of water here, I've just got lots and lots of pothos cuttings that I took from the plant that I showed you that wasn't doing very well to propagate. I'm thinking at some point I might either start lots of new plants or I might replant them in with that one, get a much fuller, healthier plant going. Um, and also I was going to say in the Tupperware boxes at the back, the little prop boxes, all they are, I can show you if you really want, but you can kind of see it through there. They're just pothos wet sticks and they're not rooting. They're not doing anything yet. They've only been in there for a couple of weeks. So I personally think it would be a bit of a waste of time to show you. Um, but then my, oh, my Peperomia sarcophyla here at the back. Oh, it's a little bit of a squish in here, but look at her. She's, I mean, when I first saw that peperomia, I was just absolutely blown away because I was like, that's a peperomia. It kind of looks like peperomia meets anthurium because it's got that amazing veination. And I just love how like dense and beefy it is. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's just very beautiful. And I know they have become a lot more readily available now, which I mean, I think is great because obviously it's a fantastic plant and lots of people, lots of people love that plant. But for a little while, I did feel very special that no one else had heard of it. And I was like, oh, I've gone and got myself a sarcophyla and no one knows what it is. Um, oh, ouch, I just whacked my elbow into my cabinet. 
uh, but next to it or just here so this is a variegated aloe vera plant and I've had quite a few of you saying no it's not it's a uh, Haworthia and I still stick firm and say it's a variegated aloe vera like the times that I've chopped and propagated it the sap or the kind of like gel sap that it produces is very aloe vera like um, and yeah I've had this one I actually started this one oh let me bring it out um, I started this one kind of by accident back when I had my shop open it was a pup that I just found in the soil of another plant that I was selling I took the pup out and I thought I'll see what it does and it's grown into a huge plant that has also given me multiple other pups in the time that I've had it as well I've given a lot away I took some to the plant swap but yeah I just really like it I think it's variegations beautiful it's a lot more interesting in my opinion than just oh sorry the standard aloe vera which I've got just here uh, this is just a little aloe vera that I, I do like again I did have a massive aloe vera that I gave to my mum and this was just a pup from the soil that I just thought you know what I'll keep a little one back for myself I don't have the space for the huge one but that one still gives me my little aloe vera fix and again I do love the splashiness of its leaves they are very diddy and very sweet um, and then I've got another hmm, not that healthy looking very dusty and yellowing dracaena lemon lime to be honest, I think it's just potted in a pot that's too small for it. I do definitely need to, to get it in a bigger pot, but for the time being, there it is. Feeling a little bit sorry for itself and making me feel bad whenever I see plants and I'm like, oh, you need things doing to you. I feel really bad and I end up having to do them right away, but then I've got a list of things that I'm like, oh, well, that can go to the back of the list. And then we fall into a vicious cycle of never ending things to do with plants. And then at the back here, we've got another one of my Anthurium clarinaviums. And as you can tell, this one is just not looking, not looking its best at the moment. This is one, I feel bad saying I forgot about it, but I, when I was moving all my plants in, I thought that I'd got all of my plants in and this one was still downstairs in my basement bedroom. And I went back after a couple of weeks just to get the last lot of my stuff. And I was like, oh my God, this plant is still down there. And I, I it just completely slipped my mind. I thought I'd got all of my plants and I hadn't. So this one was living in cold, dark, very unwatered conditions for quite a long time. So I have checked its roots. They do look healthy and it, I mean, it hasn't got any worse, but it just hasn't. I mean, obviously that's not going to get much better. I should really just go and trim those little bits of the leaf off, but I think it's in a good spot. I think it's going to be happier here once it bounces back. But for now, just looking a little bit sorry for itself. Um, and then where do we get to? So this one here, again, I'll have to put the name of this one on the screen because I only know its common name and I found out fairly recently from you guys in the comments that its common name is actually quite an offensive term, so I won't use that name in this video. Um, but it's just a very jolly, very happy plant. It's got a lot of character. I love the way that it grows. I think the little tops there look like little flowers and it's so beautiful. It's another very fast growing succulent. This one... I would say is probably on par with my jade plant. I got it as a teeny tiny plant. I think it was in a four centimetre pot or something. It was so small. And in the time that I've had it, which is probably getting on for a year now, it's given me some gorgeous growth and it is starting to trail down out of its pot as well. So yeah, I just really like that one. I think it's very different. It's very easy to care for and I really don't do a lot to it. Again, it's another one as with a lot of my succulents, but I just, I give it some water maybe once a month or something and it keeps it happy. Uh, but then next to it is another propagation. This is from my Epipremnum aureum Marble Queen, my Pothos Marble Queen. And this one, again, I only started this propagation fairly recently and I should actually fill its water a little bit more because as you can see there are two nodes there. But yeah, I just decided to take a cutting because it wasn't looking unhealthy, but as you can see the new growth just, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, wasn't great. So I was like, I'll take a cutting. I'll potentially get a brand new plant going or pot it back up with the same one to make it a bit fuller. But yes, that plant is a very fast grower. So I never feel too bad when I have to take lots of cuttings of it because I know it will grow back very fast. And this one, again, I'm going to have to put the name on the screen of. This is one that I got from Grow Tropicals recently and <laughs> I can't remember the name of it. It's a, a geo something poepegii or something like that but I'd never even heard of this plant before and I saw it on their website and its leaves are almost kind of like a cross between the Libicia turtleback and a jewel orchid 
Do you know what I mean? And yeah, I'm just very intrigued about it. I'm very intrigued about how it's going to grow for me. And I'm feeling a little bit nervous about it, seeing as some of you have said that it is notoriously hard to look after. I know some of you commented saying, make sure to keep it soil moist, make sure it's got lots of humidity because otherwise it will go downhill fairly quickly. And at the moment it seems okay, but I think it's it's very early days and it's probably too soon to tell. But I've just kept it in moss for the time being and I'm hoping that this will be a nice spot for it. If it's not and I do start having issues, then I probably will pop it into a cabinet because I feel like that's probably going to do good things for it. But as I say, for the time being, here it is. Seems okay. Um, and then let's let's go to the back. So this is my Pelia peperomioides that is no longer a full plant. It's just cuttings. I chopped this up in one of my videos fairly recently just because it hadn't been doing that well. I suspected there might be some root rot. And so I've just got loads and loads of cuttings in water. And actually, I've been looking for my other water glass and I've been like, where did I put it? Did I break it? And I completely forgot that I put plants in it. So that is making sense to me now. But I love the Pilea peperomioides. It's a very easy to care for plant. It's again just got a lot of character. It's got those gorgeous kind of pan I was gonna say pancakey. It is also known as the pancake plant, but it's just got those really unusual, gorgeous leaves. It's again very cheap to buy, fairly fast growing. And so by the looks of it, I'm gonna have quite a lot of them once these have rooted because each bit down there will form a completely new plant. So I may have to get rid of some of them at some point, unless I want a house full of pileas, which I kind of already do because I'm always getting the pups out of the soil. But it's looking, it's looking okay. I, as I say, it's very early days. None of them have started to root yet, but I do hope in the next few weeks I'll start to see some movements on that. And I know I'm kind of skipping here, there and everywhere, but this one here, oh, is in desperate need of a water. And in fact, I'm going to take this one out so I don't forget to do that. But this is my Anthurium Silver Blush and she's looking very curly today. I really, really do need to water her. But this is the one that, as I say, I compared to my other silver blush. When I showed you that one, I said that that one didn't look much like a silver blush. This is kind of like standard. This is what you tend to see in shops when you buy a silver blush. And I think this is, again, a Doriaki hybrid. If anybody could actually confirm that, that would be amazing because the internet is very bad at providing like a quadrillion different sources all saying very contradictory things. And I'm a little bit confused. Um, but besides the fact that I've been looking at it for about five days now thinking it needs a drink and I haven't done it, it's growing fairly well, I would say. This one was in my cabinet and I took it out and I popped it onto my grow shelf here. And anthuriums do tend to be very adaptable, so I'm thinking it will be fine there. It's got good light, it's got good humidity in the room. But yes, oh my goodness, I didn't actually realise quite how floppy it was. It's very floppy and it is also giving me a new leaf, so I think a fertilise and... Oh, my voice. A fertilise and a water is definitely going to be in store for that one imminently. Uh, and then this is just some more Black Pagoda, Ace Cananthus, Marmoratus cuttings. Again, propagating in water. No roots yet, but it is starting to produce some little flowers here, which is very sweet. I love it when they're propagating and they still flower. I don't really know if I should remove those flowers whilst it's forming roots, but I'm, I've got so many cuttings of this plant and it grows like crazy. So I'm just going to let it do its thing and hope that it is, hope that it's happy and hope that it roots well for me. And then this one here, it might not look that exciting at the moment, but this is one of the plants that I am probably the most excited about in my collection at the moment. It is a Anthurium pendens, and this was another one that I got in my Grow Tropicals order recently. And as you can see, its leaves, they're kind of similar in structure to the Caraceum that I showed you earlier in this video, but they really, really trail down when the plant matures, and it's really long and strappy, and they can grow to be absolutely huge. So although a lot of its growth is very upright at the moment, once it gets going, it's going to be it's going to be a proper traily gorgeous anthurium, and I'm very excited about that. This one was a wish list plant for ages, and it's up there with the Palladiflorum, which is also also on my wish list. But I think I'm right in saying that one has much more velvety leaves, and obviously it's got the white veination down the middle. But I'm very excited about this one. Oh, and I missed this one. This is a Monstera Peru cutting. Again, I don't really know why I'm propagating this plant, but I just like to have things on the go. I love watching things root. And this one, as you can see, has got an amazing aerial root on it. So although it hasn't actually started doing anything just yet, it's only been in water for maybe about two weeks now. But I think once it gets going, it's gonna, it's gonna root very quickly. So 
gets excited about that one. And then just a few more little ones down here. So this is a cutting from my Amedra and Medium Silver. And I know that these ones apparently take ages to propagate. So, oh, hang on. No, oh, oh. Okay, there's something going on in there already, which is more than I thought from just a couple of weeks. But I did decide to chop this plant just because I'd kind of neglected my other one, as I said in part one of this video, assuming I've broken this up into two parts, which I think I probably will have done. I meant to get this one on a moss pole a very long time ago and it started putting out runners and the growth it had just wasn't as, wasn't as full as I'd like it to be. So I took a cutting and I'm gonna hopefully root this one, pot it back into the same pot, get it on a moss pole and then hopefully growing it beautifully for me because because this plant has so much potential and actually in this light it's kind of hard to see but it does have gorgeous kind of bluey shimmery leaves which are just stunning and I don't really know why I haven't gone above and beyond for this plant but as I've already said sometimes chopping back and starting again is a good way to go particularly for me I don't know why it just really kind of kicks me into gear and reignites my love for plants so that is that is the plan and then this one here is just a little Echeveria, and I know people always tell me I pronounce that wrong. I have always just said Echeveria, but maybe it's Echeveria or something. And it's, it's one that I've had for a while. It's fairly slow growing, I would say. It could probably do with a pot upgrade. It has just been in this terracotta pot for about nine months now. And yeah, as you can see, it is... It is getting quite big, so I should really repot that one. But although it's slow growing, I do really like it. I think it's just really kind of, I don't know, dragony and cool. And again, just kind of looks like a beautiful flower. So I think it's very happy there. I did have it just by my window before, but I like it here. I can appreciate it here. And I like being able to look at it from above as well, because obviously it's got a gorgeous structure to it and I just like it there. And this one, oh, why can I never remember the name of this one? This one is, I think it's a Senecio pyramidatis, pyramidatis. I think that's what it's called. And that actually, saying it out loud, Senecio is actually the same family as String of Pearls. So potentially, if I'm right about that, a little, a little relation there. But again, it's just a really pretty succulent. I love how its leaves are, they're kind of like bluey white. They're very snowy. You can almost imagine like it's just been... I was going to say dusted and icing sugar or something like that, but it's really gorgeous. And it is actually a fairly fast grower as well. This is another one that I got at the same time as the Crassula here. And this one was in a very similar pot size. It was teeny weeny and it's now giving me some beautiful growth. And if you look at the top there, you can see all its little leaves coming in like that. And they're just so diddy and delicate. And yeah, I really love it. And it's very low maintenance. And just behind it here, oh, two left. So just behind it here, this is a variegated umbrella tree. And this one's another one that I'm actually gonna take out because, oh, Yoli's in the room. Hello. If you can see that things look a little bit different in here, I have actually cheated this video over two days because my arm felt like it was gonna fall off filming it before. Um, but the variegated umbrella tree, let's bring that down. This one, yes, also very much needs a water, but it's, it's a nice plant. I love the structure of its leaves and it's maybe not one that I would usually, whoops, <laughs> usually go for just because again, it's very, oh, in fact, I need to lean it up against this one. It's very yellowy and I'm not always a massive fan of yellow variegation, but I do really enjoy it. I think maybe when it gets a little bit bigger, I will end up taking some cuttings and, I was going to say trying to keep it small, but I don't want to keep it small. I just wouldn't want it as a big statement plant, I don't think. That might change as it grows. I might fall in love with it and never want to part with it. But that's just kind of my thoughts on it at the moment. But yeah, as I say, it is very dry and I have been meaning to water it as well. So we're just making a little watering pile here. And then at the back, so my Skindapsis, what's it called? My Skindapsis Trubii Moonlight, that's the one. This one, I if you watched my recent video, my repot and chat, then you'll have seen that this one really surprised me. This was a plant that has just grown so slowly for me and I haven't found it particularly rewarding to own. And so I actually said I probably wouldn't buy it again. But when I repotted it, I found a little nursery pot, like a big thick plastic nursery pot around its root ball whilst it was potted into this pot. So obviously it didn't really stand a chance. Its roots weren't able to properly spread and develop. And since I've done that, it has actually started giving me some new growth, which 
it has literally been in the last week. I don't know if that's a coincidence, but I'm now just really kind of sticking it out with this plant and seeing how it goes because it does have such beautiful leaves. I love the, I love the different colors. I love the blueiness. I really do like it. But as I say, when a plant isn't bringing me that much joy, then I do tend to pass it along to somebody else that would like it more. But maybe now, maybe now it will start to. It has got some damage there, in fact. Just have a little look. That looks like it could be pesty. Hmm. I'll put it to one side. I'll put it to one side again with the others. Um, and I'll give that one a check over after the video. I think it's fine, but I just want to be on the safe side. Uh, and then coming up here. So this is just another standard pothos plant. I've got quite a few pothos plants. And again, this one just kind of survives anywhere. So it's in a fairly dark corner at the moment, but it's still giving me some beautiful growth. It is looking a little bit curly, so it could definitely do with a drink. So again, another job for after this video, but I just love a pothos plant. I love the way they grow. I love how you can kind of train their vines to trail. This one here, I just wanted it kind of coming around the edge of the shelf. So again, I've used the kind of stick twisty clips, which you just go like that and it holds everything in place. And I just get these off Amazon. I will link them down below. Um, but no, it's a very easy to care for plant. Touch wood, this one has never given me any grief and it's lived in all sorts of environments for me over the years. And it also was a propagation that originally came from this plant up here as well. So yeah, it's doing fairly well. And next to it, I've got an Aglaonema tigress and I adore this plant. I I've already spoken a lot in this video about my love of Aglaonema, but this one again is so adaptable in its lighting conditions. Its variegation on the leaves is just beautiful. It looks like it's just been painted on there and it's just such a, such a cool plant. Like I feel like when you stand back and look at it, you can still get the full effect, <laughs> the full effect. I know what I mean by that. I think sometimes when you stand back and look at plants, they can just kind of blend together a little bit. And this one, it's just very defined. And again, it is so low maintenance. Like I, I've watered this one, I think once or twice since I've moved house and I've been moved house for two months now. That obviously does depend on the environment that you keep it in. But here in this spot, it doesn't get a huge amount. It doesn't get any direct light. And I'd say that's a fairly low light spot. So yeah, it is just very low maintenance, very easy to care for, very beautiful. And I love it. Uh, and then I've just got these these three here. So this is just a Hoya linearis, again, propagating in water. I've already said I do tend to propagate Hoya in moss on the whole, but when I got my linearis, the mother plant that you saw earlier in this video, I actually got that as cuttings rooting in water and they'd rooted brilliantly. So I thought I would do the same. And yeah, it has got little roots starting to form, which is exciting. And I might get this going as a brand new plant or I might pot it up with my other one. Yeah, I'm kind of undecided. Uh, and then I've got another variegated monstera cutting. Again, this one's just rooting in moss and it's been like that for a very long time. I should probably pot it up or pass it along to somebody else because I have got a lot of variegated monstera cuttings. And then finally here, this is a cast iron plant, which again is very much due for a water, but this is another plant that absolutely thrives on neglect. This one is so adaptable. It can survive in low light. It can survive in relatively high light. It really doesn't require much attention at all. It can also cope pretty well in lower humidity levels, which is great if you just kind of want something very easy that you can just stick somewhere. And I don't want to say forget about, but I really don't do much to this one, I must confess. But nevertheless, it has got really beautiful foliage. Again, <laughs> needs a dust. I think this area has become a little bit neglected and I think I need to give this area some attention. Um, but yes, needs a dust, but it has gorgeous leaves. It's very kind of, I mean, it's not like the bird of paradise, but I was gonna say it's very statementy and jungly in the same way that the bird of paradise is if that makes any sense at all like it isn't straggly in its foliage and all of its leaves are just very striking so again when these ones get big they are oh my goodness they're out of this world beautiful so i need to start taking better care of this one and hopefully at some point it will do that for me so yes, that's that section there. And then here I've got a yet another variegated monstera. And this is one that I grew from cuttings over lockdown and it's doing really well. Was that over lockdown? In fact, I'm, I think I'm lying. Or towards the end of lockdown, I think it was. 
And as you can tell, it has grown into a beautiful plant with such a gorgeous balance of variegation. And since I've moved house, this is the first new leaf it's given me and it is a little bit damaged. It's obviously not as lovely and beautiful as the rest of the plant. And again, I think this was just changed in environment. I think it's kind of to be expected. And it does make me sad because obviously this plant was growing so beautifully for me before, but I'm hoping that that is just a little I was going to say anomaly, anomaly leaf, and then the rest of the leaves will continue to grow beautifully and as they were before. And I, I mean, to be honest, I've kind of been thinking, is that the best spot for it? Because obviously it is quite far back from a window, but it, it doesn't seem like, apart from the initial kind of browning and damage, there hasn't been any more. And I can tell that the petiole there is starting to bulge and I'm thinking it probably has got a new leaf on the way. So... I'm going to leave it there for the time being. I think the reason I haven't swapped it out with something else is just the tail risk again, and it's not a very hardy plant. So we'll see how that goes and hope that it continues to do lovely things. And then I've got my huge yucca plant, and I absolutely love the yucca. But again, it's one that I don't really notice it growing that much. And I think because as you can see, its growth here all comes from the middle. It's not quite as, I guess, visible as growth on other plants, for example. It just kind of happens and I'm never really that aware of it. But again, it's a really lovely plant. It's been very easy to care for. I've had this one for years and I was going to say it's never given me any grief. It kind of has. It's got some browning tips at the moment, as you can see. And again, I put that down to environmental stuff. I should probably trim them back and just give this plant a little bit of loving care because I think because it is so easy, it does just fall to the bottom of my list sometimes because I'm like, ah, oh, it's a yucca. It'll be fine. And I know that's not a great attitude to have, but it does just happen sometimes with very easy care plants, doesn't it? But yeah, with this one, I'm actually quite surprised it's still giving me new growth at this time of year because it was in the conservatory before and it is a fairly high light plant and obviously it was growing well for me there. But since I've been here, I, I kind of thought it would go a little bit dormant, to be honest. So I'm happy that it seems to be doing well in this spot. And I think come summer, it will give me some insane growth. And although it is a fairly slow growing plant, it is, I mean, it takes up a lot of space. Like, I think it's actually taller than me. Let's have a look. Yep, it is taller than me. So if it was a fast growing plant, it's one that I probably would have to rehome. But I'm hoping that it will just continue to grow all the way up and be very happy in the spot that I've got it in. Uh, and then I've got my third and final philodendron silver sword down here, just propagating in moss. And I've already spoken a lot about the silver sword in this video, so I won't bang on about it too much, but it's just so gorgeous. And this one again seems happy here. I don't think, I don't think it's rooted for me yet. In fact, I need to rehydrate its moss, but, oh, hang on. It has, it has started to root. Oh, that makes me very happy. Okay, I'm gonna put it down here with the other ones that need watering um but yeah I as I say I really love the silver sword it's bluey silvery leaves are beautiful and because I've got so many of them now I think I will probably end up potting all of them together and just getting a really beautiful massive silver sword plant going because in my experience it's not the fastest philodendron to grow and all of mine are looking a little bit not sparse but I think they could just do with being filled out a little bit so that's what I'm thinking I will probably do with that one and then the last plants up here. So this shelf I've actually cleared out quite a lot recently because it was looking very kind of squished and crammed together when I first put plants on there. And I wanted to kind of leave it, I mean, leave it with a bit of space so that if I wanted to put some other smaller ones in, I could, but not make it too overwhelming, I think is what I'm trying to say. Um, but the propagations above my beds are just, again, some Croniana Super Silver, Hoya Croniana. Uh, Hoya Bella as well. I know I've spoken about all these plants, so I'm just kind of whizzing through them. And then some Hoya Pubicalix Hawaiian. And I'll speak about this plant as I go up to the mother plant here. So this is the one that I was originally sold as a Hoya Gratzelis, and I thought it was a Gratzelis for absolutely ages. And then I started getting all of these different theories from you guys about what it actually was. And I was like, oh my goodness, what is it? I don't know. And it was just a mystery Hoya in my collection for a very long time until I established that it is a Hoya pubicalix Hawaiian. And obviously its leaves just look very similar to the standard pubicalix. But if you look at its new growth as it comes in, it comes in almost kind of like 
purpley and then it fades to green as it matures and I think that's just so amazing. I, I love the way that this plant grows and I love how the dark leaves just kind of, I don't know, give it a little bit of dimension. I don't know if dimension is the right word to use but I just can appreciate the little splashes of dark here and there. And this is one as well that would definitely benefit from a trellis. I've kind of just done this as a temporary aesthetic thing but it definitely will benefit from a trellis and it was actually on a trellis a little while ago. I took it off that trellis just because it outgrew it very quickly and I decided to take some cuttings so at the moment it doesn't really look like it's tendrilling that much because obviously I have chopped it but as the plant continues to grow it will I know get very very tendrilly so Yes, that, that needs to be done. But for now, I've got to say, I do just really like it here. I think it looks really nice. And the plant does seem happy as well. So that's where it's staying for the time being. And then the variegated monstera cuttings up here. I, I've got three, so I'll just, I'll kind of show you them and then I'll just talk about all of them as a whole because these are the ones that I took from my massive variegated monstera, my really really tall one. I took them from that when I was kind of thinking okay it's not going to fit in the room anymore, I need to do some chopping and they've all rooted really well, they're all in moss as well, they've all got nice little root systems on them and they're definitely again ready to be potted but I haven't done it yet just because I am thinking that I'm probably going to pass these ones along to other homes because not that I don't love them I, I just I don't need I don't need 20 variegated monsteras um, but yeah as you can see it has got some browning on the leaves here that happened when I first started propagating the plant it does sometimes happen when you start propagating and the plant kind of goes ah before it's had the chance to form its own root system so I'm not too worried about that it hasn't got any worse but yeah I, though, I'm, as I say I'm grouping those ones together because I think you'd find it a little bit boring if I went through them all in detail uh, and in here I've just got a raffidophora tetrasperma cutting propagating in water I took some cuttings to give as presents to my neighbours before Christmas and this one just came out as a very big section and I was thinking okay well I could give them a huge cutting or I could just kind of chop it up a little bit more and keep that one for myself and that is what I've done. It hasn't rooted yet but again it's got a nice aerial root on it so give it some time and I'm sure it will do very good things. And then here, oh my goodness, my Antherium Magnificum has just given me the most incredible new leaf like look at the size of that isn't that amazing and I love the Magnificum so much this belonged to my friend who again was looking to get rid of it and I bought it off her and in the time that I've had it it's given me some lovely growth she got it as an import and I think it arrived with quite a few damaged leaves as you can see here and while I don't mind the damaged leaves that much I was so happy when it gave me this was its first leaf that it gave me in 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 my care first leaf it gave me in my care uh, and I thought that leaf was beautiful and I was like oh my goodness how exciting and then this one pops out and yeah it just it's made me incredibly happy and it seems very happy in this spot as well which again I am really pleased about because I wasn't sure whether or not this was going to be the best light but I think the fact that not only is that a I mean pretty perfect new leaf the size of it that how much it's scaled up has just made me go okay right this is a good spot for it the plant does seem happy let it do its thing and continue to grow there so yes, and then another Maranta Lemon Lime cutting. This one, I think, yeah, this one's forming some nice little roots. And again, I already said at the beginning of this video about plants in plastic cups. I wouldn't usually do it this way, but I am currently out of jars. But yeah, I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to get a beautiful lemon lime plant going at some point soon, because I do love the lemon lime and I am sad to have chopped mine, but I thought at the time it was necessary. So yeah, we'll just, wait for that to root and then we'll get it looking lovely and full again. And then this is my mother plant of the Tradescantia Ivory Hill, which is doing okay. I kind of expected this one to adjust very quickly when I moved and it has got quite a lot of browning, so it's gonna need a prune. It was one of my reasons for taking cuttings of this plant as well. It is a ridiculously fast grower. Like, as you can see, I've only had this plant for, this was a rescue plant from my, was it my mum's collection? I have a feeling this might be my mum's plant, uh, but I've only had this one in my own collection for about eight months or so, and it was it was like up here when I first got it, and so yeah, I think it's just got a bit of acclimating still to do. 
I might potentially take some more cuttings of it and give it a proper prune back. I'm not sure yet, but I do really enjoy the growth of this plant and I do think its colours are really, really beautiful. It's a fantastic beginner plant as well, I would say, although I'm struggling with mine at the moment, on the whole, in the time that I've had it, it's bounced back really well and it hasn't really given me much grief. So although you might not believe it from looking at it now, I would say it is a very good beginner plant. Oh, also, good timing because some drillings just started. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, and I've also just realised there's one more plant I've forgotten to show you, but the penultimate plant is this Hoya Rosita. And this one is just there. It's in moss. It's not doing a huge amount at the moment. It does seem to be a very slow growing Hoya. So I'm just kind of letting it do its thing. I, I don't water it that often. It is an epiphytic plant. So again, it just takes a lot of the moisture from the moss and kind of feeds as it needs to. But yeah, I, I would love to get the full plant and my idea was to let this one grow and then propagate, kind of continue to chop and propagate and get a big plant going over time. But this one, yeah, it just has given me like pretty much no growth in the time that I've had it. And finally, this is the one that I missed when I was over by the window. This is my Ripsalis bacchifera, which is also known as the mistletoe cactus. You've seen a couple of propagations of this around my flat as I've taken you through this tour. But it's a really lovely plant. I love the texture of it. It's, I mean, it's kind of almost like piney, like tree-like. It's not, it's nothing like my Lepismium bolivianum or anything like that. It's not kind of like a chunky hanging cactus, but again, I enjoy the texture of it. I think it's very pretty and it is doing well for me now. Oh, for goodness sake, person blowing leaves, go away. But I am very happy that this plant is now doing better because this is one that I got on the rescue shelf at B&Q, I, I think a couple of years ago now, and it had awful root rot and I don't think it would have had much hope if somebody hadn't got it fairly quickly and treated it for root rot so I'm very glad that I did and that it is now it's now looking good but yes so those are currently all of the all of the house plants in my collection for those of you that made it to the end thank you so much for watching and I really hope that you enjoyed this video if you did please make sure to give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel have a lovely day and I will see you in the next video